Sports. We are We are Welcome you from St. Louis, Missouri. Crowd filing in the nightcap of this day night doubleheader from beautiful Bush Stadium in downtown St. Louis. It is the Brew Crew and the Cardinals. Game two of the series. It's a four game series in all in game two of the day. The Brewers shut out in the opener earlier this afternoon. Now trying to even this series. And hi, everybody. Brian Anderson along with Bill Schroeder. Great to have you with us. We'll hear from Sophia Minard in just a moment. Well, the Brewers making a flurry of roster moves. We're going to get into that in just a moment. But our pitching matchup today is intriguing. Jimmy Nelson knows he's got to take the ball and try to get the Brewers back to winning ways. He'll match up against Marco Gonzalez. And now we'll see if Jimmy Nelson can keep this good run going, partner. Yeah, he's been outstanding. His last three starts have been terrific. 2-0. and Walks are down. Strikeouts are up. And even when you go back to five starts, his numbers have been terrific. He's only walked three and struck out 38 in his last five. Last three, 2-0. and As you mentioned, he's been able to keep the pitch count down and eat up some innings for Craig Council, and that's going to be an important thing today. This game two is a short start in the first game, so uh, hopefully Jimmy's going to be able to exercise the demons that are the St. Louis Cardinals. He's winless. He's 0-8 against St. Louis. So much news that we started the day with. Brandon Woodruff, who was supposed to make his Major League debut, could not. Six roster moves in the last couple of days. Sophia's going to run it all down for you when we come back. Wisconsin is brought to you by Miller Light, the original light beer. By QP and Abraham, voted best, rated best. QP and Abraham, tell them you mean business. And by Menards, save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. A hot night in St. Louis, Missouri. We're getting ready for first pitch game two of our doubleheader, the nightcap between the Brewers and the Cardinals. 
Good evening, everyone. Here at Bush Stadium, I'm Sophia Minner. The Brewers are hoping for a long start from Jimmy Nelson in this nightcap against Marco Gonzalez because of everything that transpired all before first pitch of game one earlier this afternoon here at Bush Stadium. Brandon Woodruff had been called up from AAA Colorado Springs. He was set to make his major league debut this afternoon. He would have been the fourth Brewers player to make his debut just this week. So there were some corresponding moves. Rob Scahill had been designated for assignment. Brent Suter had been called up to be the 26th man for today's doubleheader. Travis Shaw rejoined the team after being away dealing with his daughter's heart surgery. And Brett Phillips sent back down to AAA Colorado Springs. So Woodruff was excited to make his Major League debut, the reigning minor league pitcher of the year for the team. And here's a look at him. This was just 25 minutes before first pitch, was stretching, getting ready for his first start, and injured his hamstring, would leave with right hamstring tightness. So he walked off with pitching coach Derek Johnson, went into the clubhouse, delivered the news, and Brent Suter, again, that 26th man called up, made a spot start, and gave the team four and two-thirds innings. Here's the reaction from Woodruff and Suter on everything that transpired here this afternoon. Just, just getting out there and, and soaking it up and, you know, it was a lot of excitement and, uh, you know, felt good and went through my normal routine, went out and, uh, you know, got about halfway through my stretch and, you know, just something didn't feel right, you know, and so I guess bad enough to, to where I couldn't continue and so spoke up and, you know, it's obviously very disappointing. Uh, you know, you, you feel like you, you get out there and you, you, that's your chance to, you know, to, to have your day and, you got your family here and, uh, you know, the teammates and everything. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's baseball. It happens. Uh, I was surprised, to say the least. Um, I was in there eating crackers, you know, getting ready for the game and then uh, get the call. Hey, suit. I thought it was like bad news or something. I thought, uh, you know, some, something happened and turns out it kind of was bad news what he went down. And uh, but I was starting so 25 minutes later, I'm starting Bush Stadium. So. So a busy day continues here in between games. Brandon Woodruff was placed on the 10 day disabled list again with that right hamstring tightness. So they have recalled Paolo Espino who made a start for Matt Garza Thursday afternoon in Milwaukee and he has joined the team. He is here in uniform. He'll be available out of the bullpen here tonight for Craig Council. So a busy day here at Bush Stadium and a busy day for the Brewers in the draft war room. They made eight selections in day two of the draft. We'll get you caught up and who they took coming up next with Jeff Grayson and Davey Nelson.
Wisconsin is presented by Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. Tuesday night, St. Louis, 94 degrees, high humidity as well. Second game of our doubleheader, Brian Anderson with Bill Schroeder, Sophia Menard. Tonight's game being produced by Dan Keener, directed by Adam Bryant III. Great to have you with us. As the Brewers try to even this series at a game apiece, Craig Council and the crew rearranging the roster, rearranging the lineup cards, and Brewers making a transaction between games as well, bringing up Paolo Espino. Here's the batting order today for Craig Council. It's brought to you by Potawatomi. Lewis Brinson will lead off here tonight. Domingo Santana hits second, then Jesus Aguilar. In the middle, it's Travis Shaw, Hernan Perez, and Manny Pena. Keon Broxton will hit seventh. Arcia in the eighth spot, and then Jimmy Nelson rounding out the starting nine. And on the mound, making his first start in the big league since 2015, and only his second since 2014, is Marco Gonzalez. Yeah, missed all of last year, recovering from Tommy John surgery. As you mentioned, hasn't started up here in a while. Back in 2014, he made an appearance against Milwaukee. That was out of the bullpen. Two and a third, got a win. Actually, Ricky Weeks hit a home run off him. That's how long ago it was. So, Gonzalez getting the start here in game two. His last major league win came in September of 14. Made his debut that year. Former first round draft pick out of Gonzaga. He was a two way player, was an outfielder, first baseman, and a pitcher. One of the great college players in the West Coast Conference. And here he is back in the big leagues. His first offering swung on, fouled away by Brinson. And away we go tonight. The Brewers lost 6 0 earlier today. The day portion of the day night doubleheader it was actually a close game until the later innings. The Cardinals put it on the Brewer bullpen and stretched out the lead to 6 0. Brinson down the right field line, slicing foul. And it's quickly 0 and 2 to the Brewer leadoff hitter playing in just his third game in the majors. His second start in left field. He started the opener of this doubleheader in center field. Now the, now the Brewer offense has uh, been in rough shape the last three days after a good showing on Friday in Arizona. Found it out 14 hits. Guys have had a tough time getting on base. Only 12 hits in the last three games. Got to get something going. Yeah, the Brewers had a golden opportunity in the fifth inning in game one today with the bases loaded and one out. In a scoreless game, they could not score. And then the Cardinals scored three in the bottom of that inning. And then the game took a turn for the worse for Milwaukee. Brinson still looking for his first big league hit. Now in his third big league game he arrived to the ball club in Arizona Saturday promoted from triple A Colorado Springs. One ball two strikes to count and Brinson takes a call strike three. And that's how the night begins for Marco Gonzalez. And one of his best pitches if not the best pitch for Gonzalez is a change up and that's exactly what that pitch was right at the knees on the corner at 84 miles an hour. Doesn't throw very hard, 92 maybe. Curveball that's kind of a work in progress and that very good changeup. Domingo Santana back in the two spot in the batting order. Santana did not start game one, but came in and finished the game. 0 for 2 in the first game. Santana gets a call in right field and a wave and a miss. There's that changeup from Gonzalez. It's a good one. Yeah, good arm action on it and locates his fastball well. And made six starts down in the minor leagues, Triple A, and had a 3-6-26 earned run average. Not a big strikeout pitcher. Umpiring crew in place tonight. Doug Eddings is the crew chief. He'll call the balls and strikes. Chris Segal, Corey Blazer, Dan Bellino on the bases. Home plate umpire in game one of this doubleheader, Laz Diaz, gets this nightcap off. Put in a good day's work in the sun. And Doug Eddings did not umpire in game one. Hey, 
No balls, two strikes. Marco Gonzalez, you know, he's battling the butterflies, hoping that his surgically repaired left elbow will stand up to the rigors of a baseball season. Misses inside with a fastball. He's never been a hard thrower. He was one of the more sought after amateur players. He was a very decorated amateur player at Gonzaga and for Team USA. Former West Coast Conference Player of the Year. There was one season in college. He won the pitcher of the year, the player of the year, and the freshman of the year, Gonzaga. Which means he can hit a little bit. 2 2 pitch. And Santana strikes out a late swing, and it's right by him. Back to back K's to start the game for Marco Gonzalez. Hey, let's check out the Cardinals' Menards defense. You got Jose Martinez in left. He had a big day in game one. He had three RBIs. Fan Piscotti round out the outfield. Garcia Diaz, Wong and Carpenter from third to first, and Fryer gets the start in game two behind home plate. No Yadier Molina in game two as of yet. Jose Martinez was the big bat in game one. Had only one homer on the season before he hit two in game one of this doubleheader. And it was his home run in the fifth inning that gave the Cardinals the lead for good. Jesus Aguilar with two outs. And a strike to Aguilar quickly 0 and 2 and Gonzalez pouring in the strikes to get this game started. Fourteen pitches eleven of them for strikes. And the 0 2 down and in. Inconsistent with the curveball is the scouting report on Mark on Gonzalez. A work in progress means it hadn't been very good. It's a nice way of saying it. But the other two pitches outstanding. Cardinals still trying to figure out if he is a major league starter or if he's a reliever. Ground ball over to third. Garcia will make the play and a one two three inning for Marco Gonzalez. Cardinals coming to bat. Jimmy Nelson on the mound for the Brew Crew. Cardinals game two of the series now the Cardinals coming to bat against big right hander Jimmy Nelson there's Mike Matheny the former Brewer catcher Cardinal catcher as well a four time gold glove award winner and his Potawatomi batting order for the Cardinals looks like this today Matt Carpenter back in the leadoff spot Tommy Pham hit second and then Stephen Piscotti who did not start in game one he's in there for game two Martinez Wong and Diaz. Garcia, Fryer, and Gonzalez make up the starting nine that will match up against Big Jimmy Nelson. Yeah, Jimmy's looking for his first start ever against the Cardinals. He's 0-8 in 10 games. He is on a roll right now. His last five, he's 3-1, and, and it's all about throwing strikes. Only three walks, 38 punch-outs for Jimmy in his last five starts, throwing a lot of strikes and eating up innings. Brewers need a big start out of him today. If you weren't with us as we were discussing 
the first game of this doubleheader amongst all that happened it was a short start by Brent Suter as well who made an emergency spot start as Brandon Woodruff injured his hamstring prior to the game during his pregame stretching and he has been placed on the disabled list the Brewers were able to get Paolo Espino here in St. Louis from Memphis where the Colorado Springs Sky Sox were playing a bit of good fortune that they were so close to St. Louis right it's about a four hour drive from Memphis to St. Louis so Brewers feel like they're in good shape with their bullpen as Carpenter rips one in the right center field Broxton on the run can't get it on a bounce off the wall and Matt Carpenter leads off the Cardinals offensively with a double and it's been a down year for Matt Carpenter until Mike Matheny put him back in that leadoff spot. Well, now he's starting to swing the bat again. This guy can flat out hit fastball out over the plate. It was actually on the corner. He's able to go get it, drive it into the gap, so a leadoff double for the Cardinals. Carpenter drove in a run with a ground rule double in game one. Tommy Pham now. First pitch swinging, roller over to third, and Carpenter has to retreat. Shaw takes care of him for out number one. Well, check out the defense. Brought to you by Menards tonight for the Brewers. You got Brinson, Broxton, Santana in the outfield. Shaw, RC on the left. They're not Perez getting a start over at second base. It was Sogard in the first game. So Perez gets a start against the left hander tonight. Aguilar at first, and Manny Pena behind home plate. The third position of the day for Hernan Perez. Started game one in right field, ended up in left, and now he gets a call at second base. And hitting fifth in the Brewers' batting order tonight. Stephen Piscotti, a little broken bat flare, is going to fall for a base hit. Carpenter had to freeze, so he'll stop at third. And Piscotti on the first pitch delivers a single to right. Cardinals in business in this first inning. And not much you can do about that. Jimmy's been able to establish the fastball pretty well in his last handful of starts. I mean, good fastball in on his hands, only 92 miles an hour. Jimmy's been rushing it up there in the mid 90s on a consistent basis. That one, 92 in the corner. 28 year old, 13th start of the year. Last start was Wednesday against the Giants. Got a 6 3 win in that ball game. He went six innings. Struck out six and allowed three earned runs. Nelson was pretty efficient in that game, and Brewers picked up a 4 3 win. Strike one to Jose Martinez. Two homers in game one. He drove in three of the six. RBIs. When Jimmy Nelson is right, he'll get a lot of ground balls. This is certainly a spot he'd love to get one to try to double up Martinez, who spent a little time on the disabled list in May with a groin injury. Yeah, that good power sinker for Jimmy down and in. Hopefully, get a ground ball. The slider's been good for Nelson. He's throwing the four seamer and the two seamer pretty effectively. One ball, one strike. Cardinals have him at the corners in this first inning. And Nelson delivers outside a ball that slider. Martinez in his second year with St. Louis. 28 years of age from Venezuela. He originally started in the Orioles system and then ended up with the White Sox. He's kind of bounced around in his career. Big rangy body that many felt would be a big home run hitter in the big leagues. And he proved them all right in game one. Not one, but two. That was a bomb on a curveball in the deep center field. That made it one to nothing. And then against Neftali Feliz in the eighth inning. 
A home run to make it six to nothing and a 446 foot blast. And also added a sack fly, so three RBIs for Martinez. Two two the count. Carpenter over third, Piscotti at first, and a foul out of play. They announced 40,000 for game one of this doubleheader. And they'll be announcing something similar here tonight, although the crowd still filing in. Those are tickets sold, they announce. Brewers are playing a doubleheader today because of a a rain out game back on May 3rd. Two and two. See what Nelson has in mind on Martinez. Went up in the zone and a pop foul and out of play. And that's been an effective pitch for Nelson as well. That high fastball, the four seam fastball, didn't get it up quite high enough that time. Has been very good. Against right handed batters, finding that outside corner down around the knees. That would be a real good ground ball pitch right now. Now, you hate to make those early stress pitches in the first inning, but Nelson trying to get out of here with no runs in the first. In the dirt, good block back there by Pena. Keeps a double play in order. Well, you can see how quick he is able to get down, keep it in the glove. Glove came up just a little bit, opening up that five hole, but he's able to keep the runner at third base. Catcher going through the signals, setting the defense with runners at first and third. Let's see if Piscotti takes off on a 3 2 count. And a check on him, not a bad idea. Eighth pitch of the at bat coming to Martinez. Scotty stays put bouncing ball to short Arcia to second throw to first and a run is in and just a little out of sync at second base right there it looked as though couldn't get it out of his glove immediately and that cost the Brewers a double play got to turn that it looked like Arcia had trouble with it there is and Martinez able to beat it a fielder's choice in an RBI. Look like both players lost the grip right there. Yeah. Well, second base is certainly a position that Perez is comfortable playing, but he's only been there five innings this season. Mostly he has been in left field. He's a shortstop by trade. And that's the toughest part of second base, turning that double play with your back to first base. Well, a run is in for the Cardinals. And how about Jose Martinez driving in a fourth run of the day? Put St. Louis on the board. Two outs with Martinez at first. Colton Wong, the batter. Wong hitting at 293. He's had a good bounce back here. There was a little bit of discussion in spring training that. Cardinals might platoon Colton Wong with a right handed option. And interestingly, he was pretty vocal about that. Even to the point where he was, I wouldn't say demanding a trade, but certainly raising the notion that if they think he is a part time player, then maybe he should go elsewhere. <laughs> well, he's backed it up. He's hitting 293 coming in, so he's proving that he is an everyday player. Pretty strong comments. You got to hit your way into that everyday role. Doing a good job this year so far. Mm -hmm. 
Long up there with two outs. Nelson with a one two count. And he got him a strikeout to end the inning. Jimmy Nelson surrenders a run on two hits. And Jose Martinez with another RBI. First strikeout of the night for Nelson. We go to the second. For the Cardinals in the nightcap game two of our doubleheader and our car soup scoops from the clubhouse. I had a chance to catch up with pitching coach Derek Johnson in between games just about the circumstances. Brandon Woodruff called up for his debut and Brent Suter coming up just 25 minutes before first pitch and he said he'd never seen anything like that before. He said especially considering the circumstances that Woodruff didn't even make it out to his bullpen injured that right hamstring while stretching. So he said certainly he gave a lot of credit for how Brent Suter handled the situation came in from the clubhouse after eating crackers getting ready for the game and was able to loosen up and give the team four and two thirds. All right Sophia thank you as Travis Shaw bounces out. Yeah it was a really interesting disappointing day on one and on the Woodruff side and then you got to give Brent Suter a lot of credit. Council certainly did after the game a guy who finds out half an hour before the game begins that he's going to be starting. He's yeah. in there shocked and he credited Matt Garza with helping him calm down get focused and start thinking about the lineup and Brent did a good job. He pitched four innings of one hit shutout baseball ran into trouble in the fifth inning and for the most part the Brewers were in the game and in a position to win the game until the bullpen gave up some late runs but Woodruff now on the 10 day disabled list and with Woodruff going on the DL the Brewers were able to bring up Paolo Espino who is in the ballpark and is available in the bullpen tonight. Hernan Perez to right and a lazy fly ball is out number two. Yeah, It was awfully hot on that field in game one. It was uh, touching 95 96 degrees. Lance Lynn the Cardinal starter only was able to go five innings. Unfortunately Suter not able to get through five but you had to figure that Woodruff was all jacked up. He's out there. He's probably stretching. Try to you know, get ready a little bit too quickly stretching a little bit more aggressively than he normally would and you feel bad for him and you feel bad for the club because you know had uh, Suter not been able to eat up those innings it would have been uh, rough even for game two. Good job by him. I wonder if there was anything on those crackers. <laughs> Well Brent Suter is officially the 26th man today. You can add one player to your roster when you play a doubleheader. So I don't know who the Brewers are going to send back to AAA after this game but you would figure Suter after a start today would be a likely candidate but it's won't be able to pitch for a while I would imagine right. maybe two three days. And I'm sure he's earned plenty of points though for a potential call up later. Manny Pena is up there with two outs. 
One ball, two strikes to the Brewer catcher. I'm in the Brewers stay with nine relievers in their bullpen right now. Two balls and a strike to Pena. And a shot right at Garcia. And Marco Gonzalez puts together another quick inning. He's retired the first six with a couple of K's. Cardinals coming up, bottom of the second. as we head to the bottom of the second inning and the crew's back in action at Miller Park this Friday and take on the Padres to open up a weekend set at Miller Park and the first 20,000 fans in attendance get a free fan design Brewers t-shirt courtesy of Hupie and Abraham go to Brewers.com to reserve your spot today get a chance to see the Brewers number one prospect Lewis Brenson who is in the big leagues for the first time as of Saturday night here we go to the bottom of the second inning. Aledmus Diaz will lead off for the Cardinals. The starting shortstop. Cardinals. As Diaz sends one into left field. That's Brinson on the run. Drifting back toward the wall. And he's got it for the out. One pitch and one out for Jimmy Nelson in the second. By the way, today we are participating in the home run challenge. Every home run and strikeout in this game raises money for prostate cancer research since June 1st nearly 2.6 million dollars have been raised in the challenge and you can make a pledge right now by going to homerunchallenge.org. Brewers would love to contribute to the home run challenge. Brewers have been challenged offensively here lately. Nelson facing Greg Garcia left handed hitting third baseman tonight. And Brewer home run production way down. Matter of fact, hits have been way down for the Brewers. Now it's inside for a ball. 2 0 the count on Garcia, who started game one as the shortstop. Moves over for Diaz. Johnny Peralta was designated for assignment by the Cardinals recently. Wonder. If that's the end of the line for his career or not. Be interesting to see if he signs elsewhere. He just couldn't stay on the field on the disabled list. And had a nice career though if it is over. Sure. Three balls, no strikes. And that's a strike. Three and one. Now offensively it feels like Rock we talked about this a little bit on the pregame show today at Brewers Live but starting to feel the effects of Ryan Braun being out of the lineup every day. Ryan still out with that calf injury. Yeah, you can get away with that for a period of time. The Brewers able to you know cover Braun for quite some time but after a while I think it does catch up to you particularly when you have such a young offense guys trying to 
find themselves at the big league level. You see real good stretches, and then you're going to see stretches that aren't so good until it all levels out. And it takes a while for these guys to you know, do that. I mean, a lot of guys have not been through a full big league season trying to get through it for the first time. Here is Eric Fryer, the Cardinal catcher, takes the ball away. Let's check in with Sophia. She's got more on Ryan Braun. What's it looking like for his rehab, Sophia? Well, over the homestand, we've seen Braun start to play catch on the field. He's also been hitting, taking BP. And over the weekend in Arizona, he did take a big step forward by getting on the field and jogging for the first time. That was Friday. He ramped it up a little bit more on Saturday. Braun said that he continues to feel better with it, but still not anywhere close to 100%. There's no date yet for when he could go out on a minor league rehab assignment. But when I spoke with Braun earlier today, he was encouraged by the progress that he's made. So he said it's just taking his time. He really wants to get that calf back to as close to 100% before he comes back again. All right, Sophia, thanks. Yeah, he's being very cautious, understandably so. He came back too early last time and just felt a burden to get back to the ball club and re injured the calf. A lazy fly ball to Santana. Fryer is retired. Second out of the inning. That's when you take a little bit more on this end this time with Brown on a disabled list to make sure that thing's 100%. We saw him running before game one in the outfield. Not 100%, but starting to jog and find out what he can do at this point. He's been hitting. Taking batting practice before the games. Here is the pitcher Gonzalez, who can handle the bat a little bit as Nelson deals him a strike. Not a bad career batting average. Three hits, 10 at bats. Pitchers want to keep that right there, right where it is. And he pulls that one through for a base hit. So his fourth big league hit. Former two way star at Gonzaga and now two on with Carpenter coming up. Now, certainly a guy that is not an easy out up there at the plate even though he hasn't had that many at bat. That's a nice swing. Knows what he's doing up there at the plate. Finds a hole in the right field. Cardinals did some damage with two outs in the first game. Their three run fit two of the three runs coming on two out hits. Carpenter had one of them. Always dangerous. He's been struggling this year in these kind of spots two outs runners in scoring position but his career has always been one of the better hitters in spots like this. You can see the bat starting to heat up for Carpenter and Dexter Fowler for that matter. St. Louis had lost seven consecutive games before they played the Phillies here at Bush Stadium over the weekend. They won all three of that series. They swept the Phillies. Now they've won four straight after their game one win against the Brewers. Brewers have lost three straight coming into this matchup tonight. A yeah, good opportunity tonight because the Cardinals have three of their best hitters out of the lineup tonight. Game two. Two on, two out. Carpenter takes a strike. Yeah, Fowler, Jerko, and Molina not in the starting lineup in this game. That's what it looks like currently in the NL Central. The Brewers lead the Cubs by a game. Cubs are in progress in New York tonight. Ian Happ has hit a grand slam in that game. One and a half ahead of the St. Louis Cardinals in a tightly bunched division what has been over the last couple of years one of the premier divisions in baseball not the case this year everyone hovering around 500 so whoever gets on that 10 game win streak is going to have a good shot Craig Council it is hoping it is the Brewers that can find that kind of consistency that has avoided the Brewers this year despite playing good baseball yeah, but you know still in first place in second week in June nothing wrong with that Carpenter in the right center a base hit Broxton cuts it off but this is going to get a run in 
And the Cardinals take a two to nothing lead. A Brewer killer, Matt Carpenter. Is a very familiar sight for Brewers fans all these years. Yeah, and the thing is, somebody's getting him out. I mean, he was hitting about 220 something coming in. That fastball out over the plate, and he hits another rope out there into the outfield. Something about Brewers pitching that wakes up Matt Carpenter. Another hit and an RBI this time. Yeah, those two out RBIs are gut punchers. And with a struggling offense the Brewers find themselves down two nothing early runners at the corners now with two away for Tommy Pham Pham's had a good year but he has not swung the bat well today took the collar in the first game grounded out on the first pitch his first time up. On the ground the third across the diamond goes Shaw good throw and the inning is over but the Cardinals strike with two outs Matt Carpenter does it again two nothing St. Louis as we go to the third inning. Two innings, and Jimmy Nelson and the Brewers find themselves behind. Keon Broxton will lead the way in this third inning. How about his home run Sunday? Trying to break free from a long slump. Powerball home run number seven for Broxton hit a rocket out to center field. And then didn't start in game one, but got an at bat late and delivered a base hit to right field. And yeah, sometimes it only takes one. I mean, one mistake it was a high fastball. In Arizona, he hit out of the ballpark. It's such a mind game up there at home plate. You get that bit of success, and all of a sudden, you find it right back again. Broxton had gone 53 at bats and only five hits over his last 16 games. His last two at bats, he has two hits. Easy come, easy go. He's yeah. been a very streaky hitter. Such a mental thing, you know, up there at the plate, even pitching, throwing strikes. Getting out, reaching base, it's uh, very difficult when you're going through a tough stretch. You think about it when you're in the outfield, you're always thinking about it. You think it, the, the trick is to keep negative thoughts out of your head. Sometimes it's hard to do. What you say when you talk to yourself. And Broxton trying to fight through some of that. So he'll lead off this third inning, bottom of the order coming up. Marco Gonzalez has retired six in a row. He struck out the first two batters he faced. 
His first start in the big league since 2015. Tommy John surgery last year knocked him out the entire season. He was in spring training with the big league club and then ultimately with the triple A club. That's where he started the year and was a starter down there and now he gets his chance in the second game of a doubleheader. He's had a good change up early in this game. Gonzalez was on the Cardinals playoff roster in 2014. Matter of fact he made six appearances out of the bullpen that ball's hammered. Broxton sends one deep into left center field and that's going to be up and out of here. Keon Broxton with his second home run in his last three at bats. Oh is that what you said. What do you say to yourself. What do you say when you talk to yourself. Yeah I mean I guess it's all good now for Broxton first hit against Gonzalez is a big fly by Keon. Fastball down middle in and knocks it out of here. Brewers cut the lead in half. Well, there you go. What was it five for 50 and. Now he's three for his last three with a couple of homers. He had gone 16 games with just five hits. There's a grounder to short. Arcia bounces over to Diaz, who makes a play for out number one. This game is it can be cruel, it can be exhilarating, and it takes a lot of mental toughness to grind your way through this. And yeah. Broxton, hopefully, he's got a hot streak in him for the rest of this road trip. You know, and the thing you like about Broxton, you would never know it. Outwardly, he didn't look like he was dejected or down on himself. I know he's got a lot of confidence in his abilities, but it's awfully difficult when you go up there to play, you're swinging and missing, you're striking out a lot. But, uh, you know, Craig Council, you know, and the, hit, the coaches, they, they keep an eye on that stuff. How's the guy? Is he hanging his head? How's he in the dugout? How's he in the clubhouse? And if you're helping the team defensively while you're going through all that, you'll be able to stay in the lineup. Jimmy Nelson out to play with one away. Well, there's that code among big leaguers, right? I was talking to Jason Lane, the assistant hitting coach, yesterday, and that code that you know every major league hitter and player for that matter but specifically on the offensive side where there is so much failure everybody's dealing with their own mess mm -hmm. always as Nelson puts one in play and Wong will take care of him. So the last thing you want to do as as a hitter is to have everybody else deal with your mess as well. They're all dealing with their own problems. Right, so yep. you try to protect the field as they say and not you know throw the tantrums in the dugout and sometimes it's going to happen but you try to keep that even keel if you can. You know, everybody deals with their own mess and uh, when you're a hitting coach or an assistant hitting coach you're dealing with everybody's mess. <laughs> That's right. They are the Dr. Phil's of the. But you know the, the trick is I mean good coaches aren't going to overcoach. You know when the time doesn't call for it. you know you can stay away from guy a guy will come to you. I mean you can make recommendations stay positive. That's the trick of being a coach. Yeah. When not to talk. No balls and a strike to Brinson quickly 0 and 2. Yeah, as a matter of fact you talk to some of the great coaches around some of the great mechanics type coaches hitting coaches pitching coaches and they'll tell you sometimes it's best to let the player go through the struggles and then come to you with a request. Can you help me out. Yeah. That's when as they say the horse is broken. Yeah and that's. Sometimes the toughest thing because you see what's going on up there at the plate. Slow roller, third base coming in. Garcia can make the play. And Brinson will be safe. And will this be his first major league hit? Uh, that would have been a tough play for Garcia because Brinson gets down that line very quickly. That'll be a base hit, and Lewis Brinson is finally on the board. It all counts, Lewis. It'll t you'll take it. <laughs> that'll, Lewis be a line, been. that'll be a line drive in about 10 years. Absolutely. He had been 0 for 7. And now he's got his first big league hit. He does have a steal in the majors. That was an Arizona Sunday. And he is a major weapon on the base paths. He's got a big lead. Uh, uh, 
Yeah, not sure if Garcia was going to make a, a throw to get him out as quickly as he gets down the line. He's got those long strides. And able to beat it at first base for his first hit. He looks fast even in slow motion. Back up the middle, ranging over his Wong. He'll go to the bag himself, and then will retire the side. But the Brewers get on the board. Keon Broxton stays hot. His third straight hit. Second homer in that grouping. Keon, his eighth of the year, makes it two to one, St. Louis. A leadoff hitter and Anthony Rizzo. Ian Happ hit a grand slam for the Cubs, his first career grand slam, 461 feet. Longest leadoff home run in the last five years. There have been a lot of long home runs this year. Piscotty bounces over to third base, and on the first pitch, Jimmy Nelson has his first out. Well, Lewis Brenson with his first major league hit. Check out this between innings. Brenson gets a little, a little love from Keon Broxton. Says you're on the board. You got yours a lot quicker than I got mine. <laughs> right. saying. Boy, it That's took right. uh, Keon a long time last yeah. year. <laughs> it did. And if I recall, Keon Broxton's first major league hit was just like that. Very similar, wasn't it? Yep. A little roller to third. Here's Martinez now. I beg your pardon, Gonzalez. Jose Martinez. <laughs> You're right the first time. Right, I was right the first time. Martinez's mother is here from Venezuela. His dad, Carlos, played in the major leagues. And his mother traveling here. This is a good day to see him play. He's in the lineup both games. He has driven in four runs across this doubleheader. 2 0 the count on Jose Martinez. And there's a strike, 2 1. That's a big fella right there. He's got a big swing, he's got good leverage, and when he hits them, they stay hit. Might be one of those late bloomers. He's still considered a, a prospect. I mean, he's 28 now, but the Cardinals are hopeful he can give him a good year and be the kind of player that many expect him to be. Well, he's got that desirable big league body, right? Long and lanky, with big power. He's fast. 
Got a good arm. Well, we saw him hit one to the opposite field in game one on a curveball. Three balls and a strike. And Nelson misses outside ball four. Well, Miami hosts the 88th annual Midsummer Classic. That's Tuesday, July 11th on Fox. And you can make sure your local stars play a leading role by filling your insurance All-Star Game ballot. Full of Brewers up to five times a day. 35 times total at Brewers.com slash vote. Marlins out in front of the Oakland A's tonight, five to one. They've got a, a sale pending with that organization. Be interesting to see if that gets wrapped up before the All-Star break. There's been a lot of discussion that Derek Jeter might be involved, Jeff Bush. A lot of names are surfacing in that potential sale of the Marlins. They'll put on a good all-star game though. It's a beautiful ballpark. It is unique, very bright. A lot of bright colors. It is completely Miami, which is the way it should be. Right. Colton Wong at the plate takes a strike from Nelson. The Brewers don't go to Miami till mid September. Oh, and to the count on Wong. The Brewers are coming home. Starting a homestand on Friday. Hope you'll make plans to join us. Brewers will have the Padres over the weekend. Could make it a U.S. Open Brewer baseball weekend. San Diego's here for three. Pirates coming in for four games next week, Monday through Thursday, and then Milwaukee's on the road again. Going to Atlanta and Cincinnati after that. That's what it looks like. Two more with the Cardinals after tonight. San Diego and Pittsburgh make up a seven game homestand and then a six game seven day road trip. And then we'll see the Marlins at Miller Park at the end of the month getting into Summerfest territory. Season flying by really is. Swing and a miss Wong is down on strikes. And Nelson with his second punch out. Got Wong his last time up. Similar pitch. Pitch up out over the plate. Colton Wong with that big swing. Two gone. Nelson with a Ledmus Diaz coming up now. Needing a zero on the board. The Cardinals have scored in each of the first two innings. Brewers just got one back on a Keon Broxton homer. Strike one to Diaz. Got a full schedule in the big leagues here today. 16 games. With that double header between the Brewers and the Cardinals in the mix. Oh, and two now. Keeping an eye on the Central Division. Jeff gave you the update on the Cubs and Mets. That game is now 11 to 1, Chicago. And it is going to get the Cubs back to 500 at 32 and 32. Pirates are hosting the Rockies, the red hot Rockies, all tied at one in the seventh. Pirates got good news yesterday. Jamison Tyon returned to the active roster and pitched. He went five innings. And look good, one run. There's a defensive swing, and he's gone. Diaz strikes out. Back to back K's for Jimmy Nelson. And a scoreless third inning. We go to the fourth, two to one, St. Louis.
here in the fourth at Bush Stadium. And you can join Brewers pitcher Matt Garza and his teammates for the Brewers Bowlathon on Sunday, August 13th. You can enjoy a silent auction and, of course, bowling with Brewers players while raising money for the Joy House, a shelter to help women and children reclaim their lives from homelessness. To sign up today, you can visit brewers.com slash bowling or you can call 414-902-4581. An update for you, Matt Garza will be activated from the disabled list. He missed a start with the chest contusion from his collision at first base with Jesus Aguilar. Craig Council saying earlier today that he is going to be active. He threw a bullpen on Sunday. That went well, and it will be Zach Davies in the series finale on Thursday. So uh, all, with all the roster moves that happened today, BA and Rock, there will be another one coming tomorrow. There you go. That's why we call her Scoops Minard. <laughs> she has been busy. Scoops? Very busy. I like it. And the more roster moves coming. Well, we had six today. Amazing, and, isn't it? And now Garza coming back. There'll be a couple of moves. Actually, there'll be two. There'll be one pitcher activated Garza. Two players are going out. So we'll see who that's going to be. Because the Brewers are playing with an extra man on their roster for the doubleheader today. Aguilar leads off, takes a strike from Gonzalez. It's two and one. We start the fourth inning. And Brandon Wood Woodruff, two of those uh, transactions got called up and then put on the disabled list. Really feel bad for him. Yeah. Yep, you do. But as he said, I think he's got a good attitude about it. I love the fact that he talked to the media after the game and, you know, he was asked about it. Enjoy his time up here, try to learn as much as he can while he's here in the big leagues and on the disabled list. And he said, hopefully, it'll just be a funny story someday. And that's what you're trying to get to. It will be interesting when he is eligible to come off if he does go into the Brewers rotation or if he goes right back to Triple A. It all depends on what happens here at the big league level. And nothing's guaranteed, though. And he had a guaranteed start in the big leagues and wasn't meant to be. And he just hoped that he's going to be able to recover, continue to pitch well, and get back to Milwaukee. Well, I'll give you a good example of how truthful that is. As Aguilar sits there in a 3 2 count against Gonzalez, and he sends one deep to left. Aguilar watching this one fly, and there it goes a home run for Jesus Aguilar. We are tied at two. Well, that is one strong man right there. He got a change up down and in and golfed it on out of here. Home run number six for Jesus Aguilar ties it up. And the Brewers are back to their home runways. There's that change up down and in and look at the extension he gets and knocks it out of here to left. There you go. We're just talking about the power drought for the Brewers. It's over it appears. Roxon Homer last inning. Aguilar homers to lead off this fourth inning. Back to back innings with leadoff homers. Yeah, the Brewers got a little bit of their swagger back. All leaving at two. Spotted the Cardinals a couple of runs. Now we're all tied up. And Travis Shaw will start it up again for the Brewers here in the fourth. How about there? was a, a story I like to tell my brother Mike he he was called up to the major leagues with the Reds in 1993 and, and uh, he was supposed to be making a start. That was kind of the plan as Shaw sends one deep to right that's way back and Shaw will watch it go. Another home run back to back go the Brewers and Milwaukee is on top three to two now. Travis Shaw with number 11. Yep, mistake with a fastball, and Shaw able to knock it way back and right. Boy, just a nice, easy swing for Travis. Hitless in game one. He missed a few days, but didn't take him long. There it goes. You can see Gonzalez put his head down. He knew it was gone as soon as he hit it. A fastball at 91 miles an hour. Three homers in the last seven batters gives the Brewers a 3 2 lead. Yeah, good to see Travis smiling. He's had a rough couple of weeks. He and his family and 
Tell you what, that warms your heart. See a guy have success like that, get right back into your baseball habits. Think about his wife, Lindy. Daughter was uh, born with a, a heart defect that they are still trying to recover from as Perez grounds out. Always thinking about it, but you know, in a case like that, always good to get back to work, take your mind off a little bit, get back with the guys, and hopefully everything works out at home. Well, it's been a, a harrowing week for the Shaws. Sophia has more on the story. What's the latest uh, that you hear from Travis and his family, Sophia? Yeah, it's great to see that smile on his face. And like you said, back with the team, his daughter Ryan, just a week old yesterday, and on Friday she had to have open heart surgery at Children's Hospital as she has been diagnosed with hypoplastic left heart syndrome, HLHS. It's a rare heart defect, meaning that the left side of her heart is either under underdeveloped or even non-existent. So she had surgery Friday, had to go undergo another operation on Saturday, but she made enough progress that Shaw felt he, she was in good enough of hands that he could rejoin the team here in St. Louis. So he gave a lot of credit to the surgeons, the cardiac nurses at Children's Hospital. He said it's certainly still a long road for her, but uh, feeling much better about how things are going over the last few days and just the roller coaster of emotions for he, he and his family. Uh, it's just one of the great hospitals in the world. Children's Hospital Milwaukee as Manny Pena sends one to left field and that one's got a chance off the base of the wall Pena on his way to second and the throw comes in it is missed by Wong and Pena is in with a double uh, just had a little top spin on it just didn't have the carry I think if Colton Wong catches that baseball they've got an out he tried to catch and slap the tag all at the same time and missed it Manny Pena looks like he's a little shaken up. You can see a little out in front, got it off the end, and it was kind of a top spinner going out to the outfield. And once it got over the head of Martinez, kind of sunk and hit the base of the wall. Good throw in, and look at Wong. If he catches it, he could have caught it and not have to slap the tag all at the same time. He would have been out. On the short hop from left. Colton Wong having a rough game, too. Both at the plate and in the field. Third hit of the inning, two homers and a double. Now Keon Broxton, who homered last inning to get the Brewers on the board. Keon now with eight home runs, 18 RBIs. Second time through the batting order, much better from Milwaukee, huh? See a guy once and make some adjustments. The Brewers now have four hits in the first seven at bat, second time through. Broxton has emerged on the Powerball home run leaderboard with number eight. Eric Dame still leads the club with 16. He is two off the National League lead. 2 0 oh, the count on Broxton. Let's see if Keon's got the green light here. And that's a strike. That one literally knocked the glove off of Fryer. Handcuffed him. Rebbe in the bullpen who pitched in game one. Just 10 pitches in the first game. Broxton sends one deep to left. Has he done it again? It is up and it is off the base of the wall. Coming in is Pena to score. Broxton racing around second on his way to third. And it's an RBI triple. And the Brewers are up four to two now as Keon Broxton has lit fire. Yeah, get hot, kid, and stay hot. Boy, all of a sudden, Gonzalez getting a lot of the play. The Brewers making adjustments on that changeup. 3-1 fastball and he almost knocks it out of here again. Actually it was a changeup, 83 miles an hour. And right off the base of the fence and 
In with a triple is Keon Broxton. Well, he is fun to watch running around the bases, just flying around the bags. Broxton with his fourth triple of the season. Four hits in his last four at bats. Looks like it's going to be it for Gonzalez. First two innings, perfect. Now this is exactly what the Brewers were wanting to do here tonight. Man, no kidding. Get some offense going. Get the Cardinals on their heels and get into that bullpen. So John Brebby is coming in. Gonzalez is out. Brewers rolling right now. Still just one out. A runner at third base will set up the new pitcher after this. you by the Wisconsin Lottery reminding you to please play responsibly and by Toyota let's go places St. Louis Missouri and the Brewers and the Cardinals matching up game two of this doubleheader Mike Matheny out for a pat on the back for Marco Gonzalez who has been chased by the Brewers in this fourth inning the Brewers have four hits three runs are in and they have taken the lead so Matheny is going to go with John Brebbia. We saw him in game one. He'll get a second appearance on the day. Seventh appearance on the year. Yeah an inning uh, you know perfect baseball three up three down. He throws a lot of sliders from what we saw in game one. Seventh appearance a three point zero zero earned run average. He has allowed one home run. Boy, the Brewers offense coming to life. Good to see starting with that Broxton home run to lead off the third. Brewers have six hits in the last two innings. Here's Arcia now. He grounded to short his first time up. Broxton's over at third, one away, infield in, and Arcia punts it one, misses it. Broxton has to scurry back. And trying to get a big lead off that bag, thinking that if Arcia drops it down, he can score. Prior thinking about a pickoff. Able to get back. RC a chance to drive in a run. Brewers looking to add to it. Got some holes in the infield with the four infielders a step on the grass. And a pitch out. Evens account at a ball and strike. You don't see many squeeze bunts these days, but if there was ever a candidate, <laughs> it would be Orlando Arcia. He is an excellent bunter. Yeah, safety squeeze maybe, but uh, very rarely do you see in the big leagues anymore the suicide squeeze. Broxton has blinding speed over at third base. Won't take much to get him in if you can get one in the air to the outfield. And Arcia not bunting, even though the infielders are creeping in. Two balls and a strike. Arcia, a very good opposite field hitter. Let's see if we can 
punch one over the head of Wong over there at second base. Matt Carpenter must have been 70 feet from home plate when that ball crossed the plate. Cardinal first baseman taking a risk. Garcia rolls over one foul. Yeah, that's a slider. We saw a ton of them from Brebbia in game one. That pitched that scoreless inning and probably all but a couple of pitches were sliders. Only needed 10 pitches to get through that inning. Yeah, 10 pitches and nine of those were strikes. And then Tyler Lyons finished the game off. He got a three inning save and a six nothing win. So this is good for the Brewers to get into the Cardinal bullpen today. Garcia rolls one to third coming to the plate and a play at the plate. Boxton is safe. Beats the tag. It was a short hop coming in. And Broxton got a toe in there. Bang, bang, play at home plate. Man, what a jump off of third base. I mean, that was a relatively easy play for Garcia. Look at the secondary lead. He is off like a shot. A good throw, and he's out. Well, good call behind yeah. home plate. That's uh, Doug Eddings, the home plate umpire. A good throw, and he's out. But the short hop brings the glove up and clearly safe. Good job. Yeah, excellent call. Mike Matheny says, nope, you're right, Doug. Just motioned out to the home plate umpire saying, you got it right. We will not challenge. Boy, what a job by Broxton, though. How about that jump? You know, that's the kind of jump we used to see from Molitor back in the old days. I mean, taking that secondary lead, always looking to take that extra base and able to beat it by an eyelash. That short hop throw from third base. That'll be a fielder's choice and an RBI for Arcia. Five to two Brewers. Nelson up there to bunt with one out. And he pops it up. Easy play for the catcher, Fryer, and that's out number two. Going on contact here, Keon Broxton, and look at this jump. Yeah, look at him. He's on his way, and he doesn't even hesitate. And I think that's what startled Garcia, made him make a bad throw, and he's in there safely. Good job. That's what you like about Keon Brox. He's not only is he fast, but he has excellent base running instincts. That speed puts so much pressure on the defense. Yeah, you could almost see it in Garcia's body language, trying to hustle that throw to the plate. Almost like I can't believe he's going. Yeah, he's still mad at himself. Those burn for a while when it allows a run to score. And you stand there flat footed at third base. There's no way you're going to be able to score on that. No way. Five to two Brewers four runs in in the inning. Brenton's up there as the eighth batter of the inning. Runner at first is Arcia. Brenton with his first major league hit. In the third inning, last inning, little infield bunt single or a swinging bunt single. He'll take it. Sure wasn't a line drive to you left. You know what? It looks to me now that I look at it, it was a rocket. You're right. My correction. Brenton asked for is granted time. See that face guard that Brinson wears. Those were broken out in spring training, and a lot of the guys were trying to convince the other, especially Keon Broxton, to wear those. And no shot to the face for Brinson. He just likes the protection of it. And yeah, why not? That's a smart move if yeah. you can handle the vision and peripheral that it offers. That's a strike, a fastball in there. Oh, and to the count on Lewis Brinson. Big personality, Brinson. Fun loving guy. He's got star quality all over him. First rounder by the Rangers back in 2012. He was actually. Drafted and signed out of high school. He's from Coral Springs High School in Florida. Making his major league debut at age 23. 
Third game in the majors. One ball, two strikes on Brinson. Runner goes. Pitches down and out. Throw to second. And Arcia is safe. What if Wong keeps the tag on him? He's got an out. Yeah. Hey, Wong having a rough time in game two here. You got to keep that tag on there. If he did, he was going to be out. That's a big jump. Pretty good throw by Fryer. You can see Arcia lost contact with the bag with the left hand right here. And gets it with the right hand. You know, the slap tag and show the umpire, that just players are adjusting to that. They don't do that anymore. It doesn't cut it anymore. Those are old habits for Colton Wong. In the replay era, you got to keep that tag on him. So a stolen base for Arcia. Runner at second. Brinson fouls it away. One thing you like about Brinson, he has such a quick bat. Now he can let the ball travel deep and you figure he's going to have pretty good plate discipline at some point. It's going to take him a while but. Boy what we saw in spring training this guy with the flick of the wrist can launch him. And he covers inside and. He's a good gap hitter to the opposite field right center. Two and two the count. And Brinson takes a call at strike three doesn't like the call. But he's out. The inning is over. The Brewers bring eight to the plate and score four of them. Jesus Aguilar got it started. A leadoff homer. Number six for Aguilar. Next man up. Travis Shaw goes deep. His 11th. Two more score. And the Brewers now lead five to two. The fourth inning here in St. Louis, and every great bear deserves a great t shirt. And on Monday, June 19th, all fans at Miller Park for the Brewers Padres game will get an Eric Thames Revere the Beard t shirt courtesy of BP Come On Back Club. Tickets start at just $6 at Brewers.com. Brewers, a little life in that dugout after a four run outburst in the fourth inning, and now lead it five to two. Jimmy Nelson back to work, starts his fourth inning. And facing Greg Garcia, bottom of the order coming up here. Garcia, Fryer, and then the pitcher spot due up. We'll see what Matheny does. You know, he never finished your story. What about, story was about that? The pitching. Your brother? Oh, that was all the home runs. Right. I, well, I didn't just, want to interrupt. I, didn't, I just want to remind you, I'm interested. Where did we leave off when we last spoke? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I think we left off with my brother Mike, who was a, a pitcher. Briefly in the big leagues, but we now got to set it all up again. So we're talking about Brandon Woodruff and how you know you never know when you're going to get a major league start. Right. And today he had one, but he injured himself and he couldn't answer the bell, and so he's on the disabled list now. And assuming he'll be back and he'll have many starts in the big leagues, but you just 
never know. My brother Mike, for example. All right. There you in, go. That in, was a good lead-up right 93. there. 93. That's nice. That was, was better than the first time, He actually. was supposed to make a start for the Cincinnati Reds. And I believe it was in Montreal, maybe. But instead, they played a doubleheader against the Cardinals and uh, the day before. And they needed him. They ran out of pitching. Mm -hmm. And so they told him to go put the nails on and you're in the game. And believe it or not, that was the game that Mark Witten hit four home runs, drove in 12 RBIs, one of the greatest offensive games in Cardinal baseball history. My brother gave up the middle two homers, but he never got a start and he never, you know, got a real chance after that. Right. And so yeah. you just never know. And I always felt bad for him for that. As a soft liner in for a base hit, Garcia singles. Yeah, there's nothing guaranteed. I don't care what kind of prospect you are, because a lot of things can happen. Well, you hope he's back. Talking about Woodrow, too late yeah. for your brother. Well, I mean, Mike would still love an opportunity. He's, he's 50 now, so I'm sure his arm's okay for lost a couple of innings. Lost a few inches on the <laughs> fastball. Uh, but it is, yeah, it was very frustrating, you know, from a family member's perspective. He had had such great success in the minor leagues. You're thinking, well, this is just going to be automatic, and it certainly is not. No. There's a strike to Fryer. This is a key inning now for Jimmy Nelson. Brewers get him four runs in the fourth. He put up a zero in the third and trying to do the same here, that all important shutdown inning. You don't want to let the offense feel like they're right back in it. Five to two Brewers. It's the man with one of the more comfortable jobs in the big leagues. Backing up Yadier Molina. Eric Fryer. Yeah. Been around a while. Broke in with the Pirates in 2011. Got some time with the Twins. This is his second tour here with the Cardinals. We saw a little bit of Fryer last year with Pittsburgh. Well, he has appeared in 23 games. Only 49 at bats before tonight's game. It's like the guy in Cincinnati that backed up Johnny Bench. Bill Plummer. Bill Plummer. Yeah. I might be the only guy in town that knows that <laughs> trivia question. You uh, surveying the backup catchers around the league? Yeah. Fraternity. <laughs> it was a platoon. <laughs> One and two the count. Backup catchers make great announcers. And these days make pretty good money. As announcers or backup catchers? Backup catchers. <laughs> I noticed you did buy lunch today, so I appreciate that. Yeah, you're worth uh, 850. <laughs> <laughs> two and two the count on Fryer. Nelson trying to get that ground ball here with the backup catcher at the plate. And there it is. Arcia right to the bag. Tough throw, but Perez handles it well and turns the double play well, right on cue. Looked like Arcia could have taken that one himself. Uh, once again, Perez involved. Perez, and Perez with a nice adjustment on the low flip by Orlando Arcia. This is about room service as you get for a double play. Catcher at the plate. Low flip and a good turn by Perez this time. These guys are so smooth. I mean, that's not a good play by Arcia. Not going to be perfect every time, though. It's nice to have a pick me up from Perez right there. Yeah, but the fact of the matter, the fact that he got rid of it so quickly yeah. allowed Perez to make an adjustment, get himself set, and make a good throw to first. On the first pitch, a liner in the left field, Chad Huffman. Pinch hitting. Got a pinch hit triple in game one. He's having a nice day. And now a single. That pitcher spot has produced two hits tonight. And the inning is alive for the dangerous Matt Carpenter.
Carpenter has only hit in the leadoff spot the last seven games. Dexter Fowler had been the primary leadoff hitter. Carpenter was actually hitting third most of the year when the Cardinal offense was sputtering, so Matheny made that switch. Put Carpenter in the leadoff spot. He's typically got Fowler hitting second. And they're both starting to hit now, and the Cardinals are starting to win some games. Yeah, it is funny, isn't it? Uh, you know, same guy, same hitter, different spot in the batting order. He's starting to turn things around. You can understand Matheny's thinking there that Carpenter, after the losses of the likes of Matt Holliday and big run producers that they've had, as Carpenter sends one to right, going to stay playable for Santana and Nelson. With that all important zero after the Brewers get in four runs in the fourth. 5 2, Milwaukee. We go to the fifth inning. By T-Mobile, some news around the big leagues tonight. Evan Longoria, raised third baseman tonight, has gone two for three with the double, two RBIs. He's hitting 325 in June, and Paul Goldschmidt continues to swing a hot bat for the Diamondbacks as well. He's three for three with a two-run home run in Detroit. A six to nothing lead for the Diamondbacks, and Andrew McCutcheon has gone two for four, a pair of home runs for him. The Pirates have a five to one lead over the Rockies. All right, thank you, Sophia. Sunset. Nighttime in St. Louis on a Tuesday and the Brewers have a lead five to two. Cardinals jumped out two to nothing Brewers with five unanswered and it was started by a Keon Broxen home run in the third. Aguilar Shaw and Broxen have all homer tonight. All solo shots. Domingo Santana on the first pitch. New pitcher in the game for St. Louis Brett Cecil. And gets one pitch and one out here to start this fifth inning. Man, Cecil got roughed up his last time out. That was at Cincinnati back on the 7th of June. Two thirds of an inning, four earned runs. You see that earned run average at 566. This guy's had a nice career in the major leagues, having a uh, rough go of it here in St. Louis. Former Toronto Blue Jay, Brett Cecil. Here's Aguilar. You see that pick by Carpenter on that, uh, you know, that throw by Diaz. That was a almost impossible hop that he had to handle and handle it nicely. Got the out. Guy that has bounced all around the infield. He's played every position but short. Was thought to be the second baseman of the future, but he he went to third one year played very well there and he's, he's an excellent first baseman too he saves a lot of errors. Aguilar on the ground right back to the mound. Two outs.
Cecil had his time as a starter early in his career. Actually made an all-star team. The first year the Blue Jays had him pitching out of the bullpen exclusively. He was really good for Toronto coming out of the bullpen and not not in a closers role. He made the all-star game as a a late inning reliever. That was back in 2013. But he's been exclusively a reliever since that season. And he's good for about 60 games a year, 60 plus. And although the numbers are poor this year, he's having the worst year of his career. He's been a good pitcher in the past. Yes, he has. He used to be in the All Star game with starting pitchers and closers. Not right. so much anymore. No, you got you to build it. Like you would a regular roster. You see, uh, remember Omar Infante or uh, Martin Prado made the All Star team as utility players. Yeah. Shaw out in front of one. Fly ball left field. This is going to be a 1 2 3 inning for Brett Cecil. In order, seven pitches. To the bottom of the fifth inning from St. Louis. Don't forget, beginning Thursday, the world's greatest golfers battle to be crowned America's champion in golf's can't miss major. It's the 117th U.S. Open, and it begins Thursday on Fox, FS1, streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Good news for those players, Rock, out at Aaron Hills, first U.S. Open ever staged in Wisconsin. They're going to mow down some of the fescue. With all the rain they've had, there's that great trophy. We had that in the booth last week. The Victory Angel atop that trophy. That was quite an experience to be that close to the famous U.S. Open trophy. You did enjoy that, didn't you? That was awesome. I wish all of our friends over at Aaron Hills, our pals at the USGA, and all the players, caddies, the best of luck this week. Nelson drills. Tommy Pham, a struggling hitter for the Cardinals, and Nelson hit him right in the back. And not even close. Yeah, first pitch of the inning. Leadoff base runner. And third leadoff base runner for the St. Louis Cardinals tonight. That one right on the uh, the back, back of the arm. Nelson has yet to have that clean inning. He's put up a couple of zeros the last two innings after the Cardinals scored in each of the first two. And he'll get back into the stretch here with Piscotty coming up. Man, that was actually his second pitch of the inning. I missed one. Now the first one almost hit him too. Yeah.
Piscotti singled in the first, grounded out his last time up. And Nelson misses one and one to count. Piscotti burst onto the scene two years ago, had a great postseason, even though the Cardinals lost to the Cubs in 2015. Piscotti was a star in that series, proved he was ready for the big stage. There's a bouncing ball, big hop. Perez backhands it to Arcia in time, a double play. Well done again. Boy, these two are putting on a clinic. They're just quick, quick and accurate. Well, they weren't able to turn one in the first inning, cost the Brewers a run, but since that time, these guys have been terrific. Perez with a backhand flip. Now RCA would have finished it off. He touches the bag and on to first, and Piscotti barely in the shot. It's just so fun to watch. It's like poetry out there with Arcia. The way he catches the ball, too. He, it doesn't even get inside the webbing of his glove. It's almost just right there on the edge where he can grip the baseball. We don't the heel of the glove. Yeah. I mean, good infielders can do that, so they don't have to dig in and maybe lose the handle on it. He does not like a loose glove. He likes think imagine a glove when you right out of the box brand new nice and stiff. That's the way he likes his glove because he can do a lot with it. He can he can catch the ball a certain way and catch it on his palm like you said. It's got that thin or shallow right webbing. Middle infielders don't like big gloves for that reason to turn double plays third base you can get away with it a little bit more. Wouldn't surprise me at all if that ends up as a gold glove at some point in his career. He's got that kind of skill. And he just enjoys playing defense. Always bouncing around, trying to keep runners close, looking for pickoffs. 22 years old. Yeah, what a future ahead of him, right? Jose Martinez with two away bases empty and a swing at a miss and Jimmy Nelson gets the double play ball and then follows it up with a K the slick fielding Arcia always a joy to watch in and out of his glove in a flash 5 2 Brewers. In tonight's time of the game winner, the Shoe Factory in Valders, if they call the Brewers by 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, they get 40 tickets to a Friday night game in the Miller Lite beer pen. This offer courtesy of the Tavern League of Wisconsin and Miller Lite. Perez drops a bunt down on Cecil. He spins and throws, not in time. There now, Perez with a bunt base hit. That was quite the play by Brett Cecil. But as a left handed thrower he had to spin all the way around and he can't make the play. Yeah good speed uh, good idea by Perez just try to get that lead off. 
hit her on base. You can see how far off the mound Cecil falls off toward third base. That's what uh, allowed Perez to reach. By the time he spins around, not able to get much on the throw. Good idea. So Perez he is aboard. Bunt single to start the inning here in the six. Brewers lead five to two, scoring four of those five runs in the fourth inning. Three homers tonight. Here's Manny Pena who doubled in that four run fourth. Yeah, two homers, two doubles in that fourth inning. By the way, I know you were locked in on the tavern of the game, but yeah. I think I might have seen the greatest mullet in Major League Baseball. Right there. I can't think of any better mullet that I've seen ever, actually. It's good work. That is solid. I mean, that there's a lot of attention to detail. Your best mullet rock on a scale of one to ten, how close to that one were you? Let's Not say even. that one's a ten. Well, my, my, my mullet wasn't that long. Mine was a little curly. Oh, I see. You know, a little spritz. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah, that's uh, that's a throwback. That's seventies right there. <laughs> oh man, that's great. That's a rally mullet. What that is. And Perez picked off, and they'll get him at second. Perfect throw. Carpenter almost hit Perez, but he fired it right over his shoulder and right on the mark. And that'll officially be a caught stealing. And Perez going on the first move. And I think Brett Cecil saw him and threw over. Carpenter had plenty of time just to lob it over his back. Easy tag by Wong. 1 3 6 on the caught stealing. And that wipes out the base runner. 1 3 4, I should say, on the caught stealing. So now Pena is up there with the bases empty. Doubled and scored his last time up. He lined one to third his first time up. So jam shot pop up foul and out of play. Pena and Bandy continue to do an excellent job as the catching tandem for the Brewers. Most importantly, handling the pitching staff well. Throwing the baseball well, handling the pitchers, you know, getting them through games, calling a good game, and oh yeah, the offense has been pretty good. Now Pena's been able to maintain a high batting average. Hovering around 300. Combination has been very good offensively from Milwaukee. One of the better catching duos offensively in baseball. What do you think about Pena with two homers, 17 runs batted in, and then Bandy with six homers, 18 driven in? So you take that from your catcher if you get here to the early stages of June. Eight homers, 35 RBIs from the most demanding position on the field. And I, I would imagine Craig Council has got to you know, believe that it's one of the more pleasant surprises that he's had so far this year. Not knowing really what you have going into spring training defensively or at the plate. Two and two the count on Manny Pena and he fights another one off. One thing you like to hear when you when you ask the coaching staff or some of the veteran players about Pena and Bandy is uh, you hear a similar story from most that they are great clubhouse presence players as well. They especially Bandy who brings a little bit of the clubhouse humor. He's always got guys rolling in there which is what you need mm -hmm. through a long season need somebody who knows when to crack a joke and how to ease up the tension during a losing streak. Bandy's been that guy. Mm -hmm. Not afraid to laugh at himself. Pena's very well respected as well. Long run through a couple of organizations and making the most of his chance in the big leagues. That is a called strike three. Pena. I don't know about that one. And that 
is a strikeout for Cecil his first. And that gives us a chance to remind you that Fox Sports Supports is proud to team up with Positive Coaching Alliance and its mission to develop better athletes, better people, by working to provide all youth and high school athletes a positive character building sports experience. Visit foxsportsupports.com to learn more. Two outs. Here's Broxton now. Four straight hits for Broxton over his last three games. Including two home runs. Led off the third inning with a home run tonight. Broxton drove in a run with a triple in the fourth inning. Two for two. A double and a single away from the cycle. Yeah, you would think those are the two easy ones, right? Tough ones are out of the way. Two balls and a strike. Had a good cut. Broxton talking about his streaky nature. He's had two seven game hit streaks this year. First 14 games, really bad at the plate. Next 28, great. Get 337. And then his last 18 games, he's hitting. 111. He looks like he's getting it turned around a little bit. With Jonathan VR on the disabled list, Broxton is certainly a candidate to lead off, but he's got to prove he can get going at the plate, cut down on his strikeouts. Mm -hmm. The Brewers do like Eric Sogard in that leadoff spot. He gets his second game off. And a call. Strike three. Broxton is out. So Brett Cecil with two scoreless. And we're headed to the home six, Milwaukee five, St. Louis two on Fox Sports Wisconsin. Yeah, every time he comes to the plate, Jeff, he's a showstopper. Thanks for that update. John Carlo Stanton. And his three hundred million dollar contract. Has John Carlo Stanton. Been the superstar player that we thought he would be or where are you at with him right now? 
I think I can't, he I can't uh, get a handle on. Yeah, Stanton. I mean, a little setback with the uh, getting hit in the face a few years ago, but mm -hmm. uh, I guess. You know, he does hit some majestic home runs. We don't see enough of them, really. I mean, it's hard to tell. It's hard for me, unfair for me to give an, a, an assessment on Stanton, but when you talk about home runs, man, there's not too many better. Hits him, nobody hits him any further than he does. I guess Judge was one of those guys that might be able to compete with him. Those two guys are going to have fun at the home oh run hitting gosh. contest. That's worth it right there. But when you talk about a guy that's worth the price of admission, Giancarlo Stan, when he's at the plate, he's up there. Yeah, he's fun to watch. Nelson pitching in the sixth inning now with a 5 2 lead. Long chased one, pop up. And that's going to be out of the reach of Pena. Are you, are you asking me if I think he's worth $300 million? No, no, I don't. Oh, you okay. know, who, who can answer that question? Nobody. I don't think really. anybody is. <laughs> These guys do. Put on a show, and I would say I agree with you. Stan's one of those guys that you know, he moves the needle. Yeah. He sells tickets. Right. He's a yeah. he's a guy that earns that money in his way because he does have that attraction status. Two two the count. Pena sets up inside, and Wong bangs it back up the middle. Jimmy let that one hang over the plate. And Wong didn't miss this time, and it's a leadoff single for the Cardinals in the sixth. At 93 miles an hour. I guess average velocity for Jimmy down a little bit. That went up and away, and Wong able to center on it after striking out a couple of times. Didn't quite get that one high enough. Wong had swung through a couple of two strike fastballs up in his own. First two times up. One for three tonight, and again the Cardinals have a leadoff base runner. It's the fourth inning of the six that Nelson has pitched. Slow roller, third base, got to hurry it up. Might as well let it roll now. No chance to get Diaz, and the Cardinals have the first two on. A swinging bunt single by Letmus Diaz. Not much you can do about this. You had Shaw way behind the bag. By the time he gets there, I think he realized no chance he throws it anyway. First and second, nobody out. Bottom of the order up. Tying run coming to the plate and Greg Garcia, who has walked and singled tonight against Nelson. Jimmy has induced double plays in each of the last two innings and now he would love to have another one. Try to clean this inning up. Seventh place hitter up there Greg Garcia. And a bunt. Pena's got it. Fired a third out there. Throw to first out there. On a foul ball. Ah, Foul ball. No wonder everybody stopped running. Uh, what a job by Pena though to try and get it in fair territory. That was close. Not reviewable. Is it? Hard to tell here. Yeah, he played umpire trying. thinks it's in uh, foul territory along the third baseline. No balls in a strike. Too many guys get out from behind home plate any quicker than Manny Pena. He is quick on those feet behind home plate. Garcia does have three sack bunts this year, not bunting this time, and he cuts and misses. Oh, and to the count. Be a better look at it from down the left field line. Pena was trying hard to get there before it went foul, but it looked like a good call. Yeah, Edding's got himself in a perfect position, so it's not where Pena is, it's where the baseball is. It's not like football. No balls, two strikes, two on, and the inside move by Nelson. Runners stay put. It's the only base you can fake to now, second base. You could never fake to first. You could fake to third for many years until just recently. 
0 oh and 2. Big pitch coming here for Nelson. So how long is it going to be before you can't fake the second. I think it's coming right because the whole idea between that fake is to deceive the runner. Well why not just do it when you That's when what they, it, instilled the uh, the rule that you can't fake the third make it third and second. I'm in. I'm all in. Not quite sure. That is the only purpose to fake to second is to deceive the runner. Garcia slashes one foul. Yeah, pretty good slider right on the outside corner by Jimmy. Yeah, he wants Manny to come out. Talk this next one over. You know the importance of this at bat here for Jimmy Nelson. This is a key moment right for him right now. Because you have to win this battle. Maybe changing signals with Wong at second base. Hard throwing left hander Josh Hader loosening in the bullpen. As you get down to down the batting order, the Cardinals have some thunder on their bench. St. Louis has Jerko, Molina, Fowler, all still available to hit. That pitcher spot is in the hold right now. 0 oh and 2, 2 on, nobody out. And Garcia lofts one in the air, left field, long run for Brinson. That is slicing and just out of his reach. And the count remains at 0 oh 2, and another foul ball for Garcia. Boy, those low walls are dangerous. Good for the fans, not so good for the players. Knee high. Brenton in his first trip here to St. Louis played that pretty well. Got to the wall and tried to make a, a lean into it. Oh, he's playing shallow and over toward the line. Nelson in a fight here with Greg Garcia. He's got him 0 2, but Garcia's hanging tough. And Nelson's given him his best offerings. He's been working the outside corner against Garcia. Brewers have turned two double plays already. The 0 2. Fights another one off. And keeps uh, pouring in strikes. Doesn't have to throw pitches over the plate. Maybe waste a couple, throw one high. Maybe bounce one of those curveballs. Pena very good at blocking it. Four foul balls here with two strikes from Garcia. Pitch number seven on the way. It was a bad throw by Garcia that allowed the run to score. Nelson deals down and in. Did he hit him? He did. Hits it with an 0 2 pitch. And now Nelson is in all kinds of trouble. Bases are loaded with nobody out. And not sure where he was trying to go, but you know, that's not. Man, that pitch Ooh. gets him right below the calf, above the ankle. And I don't know, was that a breaking pitch? That yeah, was a slider. slider. Yeah. Pulled the slider, and worst case scenario for Nelson. And now they're all loaded up. Derek Johnson, the pitching coach, is on his way out, and the game is on the line right here in the sixth inning. That tying run at first base. That was an at bat. You couldn't let get away. Now Nelson is going to need a break. Hater, the left hander, is awaiting. There are no left handed batters on the bench for St. Louis. Fowler is a switch hitter, so there would be no matchup for Hater. But he's not necessarily a matchup pitcher. And yeah, he's uh, been pretty good down in the minor leagues, retiring right handers and left handers. The Brewers would rather have Fowler hit right handed than left if it gets to that spot. Nobody out. Base is loaded for Fryer. Strike one. Fryer bounced into a 6 4 3 double play his last time up.
Oh, and two now. Looks like the Brewers defensively are going to concede the run to turn two on a ground ball. No doubt. All infielders are back. Corner infielders are back as well. Hard hit ball to Travis Shaw. Probably go home. Home to first. Great speed over third base and Wong. Diaz runs well at second base. Garcia runs well at first. 0 2 pitch. Did he go? They will ask. No, he didn't. That was close. Ball at two strikes. Well, if Nelson does not retire Fryer, he'll certainly be out. He might be out anyway with Fowler due to hit next in a pinch hit roll. One and two on the ground. Arcia goes to second. Out. Perez throws. Scooped by Aguilar. Nice. And a double play. Well, that's a nice scoop by Jose Jesus Aguilar right there. Ball in the dirt. Very quick feed over to Perez, whose throw was a little bit short. But Jesus able to dig it out. Well, the Brewers needed that double play in the worst way. Did they ever? Three nice. straight innings with double play balls. A nice pick. Good throw. Short throw to first, but Aguilar able to pick it and get the double play. Run does score, makes it five to three. No RBI for Fryer. And runner at third now, Diaz. Dexter Fowler announces a pinch hitter, the switch hitter. And Nelson drops a big curveball in there for a strike. A couple of hits and an RBI in game one for Fowler. Started in center field. He's starting to swing the bat better. Was that out of the strike zone, partner? That first two pitches look pretty good. <laughs> I mean, you're trying to, you know, draw me into that discussion. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, let's go here. That's a strike in any league, right? <laughs> one ball, one strike. And a breaking ball dumped into left field. A base hit. The run is in. And those two out RBI hits. They are killers. Five to four, Milwaukee now as Fowler with a little flare single. Well, one and one instead of 0 and 2, and Fowler able to fight off a slider and dump one in the left. That's going to do it for Jimmy Nelson. That's a big hit for the Cardinals. And Nelson will hand the ball to his manager, and his night will end five and two thirds innings. Still a chance to win the game, but he will exit with four runs in and a runner at first. That is his responsibility. Hard throwing rookie Josh Haters coming in. We'll set him up after this.
finish line here in the sixth inning. And he exits five and two thirds with four runs, nine hits allowed, and he is hot on that bench. Gave up three hits and a hit batter, did get a huge double play. But now the Cardinals are threatening. They are within a run. And Josh Hader on his way out. It is appearance number two in the big leagues for one of the top pitching prospects. Yep, uh, tossed a scoreless inning in his major league debut on Saturday against the Diamondbacks. A couple of walks, one of them intentionally did strike out a batter. He's got Matt Carpenter with two outs, so lefty versus lefty. Hader came to the Brewers from the Astros organization. He was in the Carlos Gomez deal two years ago. Carlos Gomez and Mike Fires. And he will have his work cut out for him here with Carpenter coming up. Two hits today for Carpenter, including an RBI single with two outs in the second. First look at Hader for these Cardinals. And 93 with the first fastball. Rushing it up there in Arizona in mid 90s. Key for Hader is going to be his ability to throw secondary pitches. Two outs, six inning. Runner goes. Pena's throw a second on the mark. The tag in time. Manny Pena cuts down another would-be base dealer. Boy, this guy can really throw. Inning ends at second base. Fowler stumbled a little bit. It cost him 5-4. Brewers still lead as we go to the seventh. Lead. Cardinals just got two in the bottom of the sixth inning, but the Brewers have been benefited by three double plays. It is in our Jimmy John's delivery of the game. And double plays in the fourth, fifth, and sixth. They've gotten Fryer a couple of times. And the Brewers uh, have turned more double plays than any team in the National League. At least they have for most of the season. Uh, Jimmy John delivery of the game, and uh, Eric Fryer responsible for five outs. Tonight in three at bats. There you go. They lead the league. 75 double plays, most in the NL. Always a good news, bad news stat, right? No guys on, <laughs> but you're able to erase them. Yeah, a lot of guys on base when you're leading the league in that category. However, big caught stealing there by Pena to end the sixth inning. That out belongs to Hader, by the way. So he does not record an out at the plate, but the out at second. Gives him a third of an inning, and that'll probably be all we see of Hader. Matter of fact, Council has Eric Thames already on deck. So Arcia leads off, then Thames, it looks like, and then back to the top of the order. Arcia on the first pitch. Big bouncing ball to Diaz. One away. 
Kevin Segrist didn't even have a chance to set him up yet. Yeah, last appeared on June 7th at Cincinnati. And through a scoreless inning, Segrist with the high end run average, fastball change up for Segrist. I think Mike Matheny's thrown a lot of lefties at the Brewers in these first two games today. And the last two years, this guy's been one of the better lefties in baseball. 2015, he was almost unhittable for the Cardinals. So that ground out by Arcia changes the mind of the manager, Craig Council, and he's going to go with Nick Franklin instead of Thames. Brewers are playing with a four man bench. Franklin is a switch hitter. Got a right handed hitter over there, the other catcher, Jet Bandy. Got Sogard on the bench. Now you figure even if this game stays in a one run Brewers lead, as Franklin sends one in the air, left center field, that ball's hit well. Pham is on the run and he's got it for the second out of the inning. Hey, the Brewers are teaming up with the Green Bay Packers to host the first ever Pack at the Park next Wednesday, June 21st, featuring appearances by Packers alumni. A first pitch by Packers president Mark Murphy in a special green and gold Brewers hat. For tickets and details, visit Brewers.com slash theme nights. It's a sweet hat. I like that hat. Pack at the park. Makes sense. June 21st. Brenson. Fly ball right field. And Segrist. A four pitch. Seventh inning. Brewers go in order. Stretch time in St. Louis. is brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light beer. Getting into the late innings now in St. Louis, the gateway to the west, the famous arch. Right along the Mississippi River. Bottom of the seventh coming your way. Jared Hughes is on to pitch for the Brewers. Yeah, we saw him in game one. He faced one batter, got him out. That was Tommy Fan, the Stram and inherited base runner. Unscored upon in his last five appearances. It's been a challenge lately for Craig Council to get to the eighth inning with a lead to be able to bring in Barnes and Knable. Tough the decision, you would imagine, for Council. Last inning, he could have let Hader hit and had Hader come out and start this seventh inning with the lefty Carpenter at the plate, but instead went with a pinch hitter. So now Hughes will face Carpenter to start it, Fam to follow, Piscotti after that. Top of the order for St. Louis. Carpenter was at the plate when Fowler was thrown out trying to steal second base. Well, I guess you have to weigh the risk. I mean, Carpenter's the only left-hander at the top of the order until you get the Wong 
Wong's a number five batter, so do you sacrifice an out? You know, just to be able to get one batter. If there was a couple of left handers, maybe he would. This is where the managers in a National League game, when it's a one run game like this, are in full grind mode on that lineup card, trying to play the matchups. Carpenter's been a tough out, two hits tonight, drove in a two out run in the second inning. Cardinals scoring twice in the sixth to make it a one run game. Right down the chute. Yeah, got to be careful. Another one of those. And Carpenter sends one deep to right. And we are tied. Up council is trying to avoid. Carpenter delivers with a solo homer. His 12th of the year, and it is 5 5. Yep, on a 3 1 pitch, a flat sinker, and he hit it a ton. Outer half, mid thigh, and man, we're all tied. Three runs for the Cardinals last couple innings. Brewers bullpen continues to scuffle. Uh, just trying to figure out a way to get to the eighth inning with a lead. That's been a challenge. Tommy Pham now and a big swing and a hanging breaking ball. Oh and to the count on Pham. He was hit by pitch his last time up. A couple of ground outs his first two trips. Manager going through the wheels. Tough decision. When you have your hard throwing lefty out there in the pen, he's in the game. He have to decide whether to pinch hit for him, let him hit, and a one run game. A swing and a miss. Fam strikes out. First out of the seventh inning. There's a good one right there. You can see the difference in the two fastballs. The one that Pham swings over the top of and the one that Carpenter hit out of the ballpark. And that one had some good downward movement to it. The one Carpenter hit did not. Here is Piscotti now. Games that we sat through to watch Matt Carpenter take apart Brewers pitching. I mean, it, it feels like every game every we've game, ever seen. Every game that he plays, it seems like <laughs> he's doing something like this. I'm sure that's not the case, but that's what it feels like. He has three hits today, two RBIs. Whatever the book on Carpenter the Brewers have had all these years has not worked. Well, he just camps down for Man. his pitch, and Man. when he gets it, he doesn't miss. Bouncing ball to third. That's fair. Long throw across the diamond for Shaw is a good one. And Piscotti is out. 5-3 on the put out. Two away in the inning. That's really the difference between the elite big league hitters, right? I yeah. mean, the guys that when they get their pitch, when they get the mistake, they don't miss. Yeah, especially you know late in games when their team needs them and yeah, Carpenter one of those guys that har is hardly ever hurt Does not spent much time on the disabled list a wave and a miss Jose Martinez committing early in a swing. Maybe give him a day off tomorrow. He's about due. We need to have a chat with Mike Matheny. Another big swing. And it's quickly 0 and 2. Looks like Hughes has found the bite on that sinker ball. 
ground ball pitcher that he is. Jared Hughes two out seventh inning trying to get the Brewers back to the dugout and that's a good one big bender in there for a strike Martinez is out Hughes comes back strong lead off home run off the bat of Carpenter and we are tied at five as we go to the eighth. Up. Rangers Astros Rangers own that series last year but a different story in 2017 tie ball game now 5 5 and Trevor Rosenthal who is the Cardinal setup man is on to pitch he is coming off an outing rock against the Phillies where he struck out the side yeah. in his last time out Sunday and yeah, that was back on the 11th and uh, he has found it again that change up fastball combination for Trevor Rosenthal and the former closer for St. Louis. First fastball at 98 miles an hour. And another one in there at 99 this time. Santana with a big swing. Brewers have gone quietly the last three innings. There has been a double, Perez, or rather a base hit by Perez, a single, but he was caught stealing. And Santana takes a big cut. On another big fastball, and it's one and two. Brewers were retired in order on four pitches last inning by Segrist. A four run fourth had Milwaukee up 5 2. Cardinals scored the first two runs. But then the Cardinals get two in the sixth, and then a Carpenter home run in the seventh to tie it. If you're just picking us up here in the late innings. Two and two. Santana waits. And a fastball misses. Boy, that's got some hair on it. Yeah, just missed that outside corner. It's never been an issue of velocity for Rosenthal. It's getting ahead in the count. Not being able to throw that change up slider combination for strikes. And he misses, and Santana draws the walk. What well, a terrific. Plate appearance there for Santana. That's first walk issued by St. Louis pitching tonight. 
Well, there's the go ahead run at first. You got Jesus Aguilar coming up. Power on power. At the plate presented by Wendy's. That home run for Santana, rather for uh, Aguilar, was to lead off the fourth. He is sixth of the year, now 21 RBIs. Uh, had a mind to knock another one out of here. This was the homer in the fourth. Starter tonight. That change up. Uh, 83 miles an hour. Now he's dealing with 99. A little more difficult to get the barrel to bat out on that. Brewers chase Marco Gonzalez in the fourth inning. Nothing but fastballs from Rosenthal so far. Counts even a ball and a strike. And Aguilar lays off two and one. Rosenthal is from these parts from Lee Summit Missouri just a few minutes from St. Louis a 21st rounder gives you an idea that it's an inexact science 21st rounder emerging as a closer and there's a swing and a miss he had 48 saves in 2015 Rosenthal that was his all star season. Now in his sixth year as a Cardinal. Removed from that closer's role last year. And now he's in a setup role. Aguilar is hoping for a mistake. Go ahead and run it first. And that one is a little bit low. 99 miles an hour. But the count goes to three and two. Yeah, you don't figure Santana be running with Rosenthal out there, the strikeout pitcher. You got Shaw on deck, the left hander. Payoff pitch coming. Aguilar hangs in there. No secret so far, right. just reaching back and throwing as hard as he can. I guess if you're Aguilar, you just try and get that bad head out as quickly as you can. You don't have to worry about anything off speed. Still not easy at that velocity. Gets on you quickly. Three and two again. And he lays off back to back walks. Well, those are two terrific at bats for Santana and Aguilar. Both got into a three two count with the big velocity and both draw walks. Derek Milliquist, the pitching coach, on his way out. As you get down in the batting order, you've got Eric Thames, left-hander, Eric Sogard, another left-handed batter. Well, the Brewers are in the go zone right now. Travis Shaw's coming up. Hernan Perez to follow. Two of their better hitters. Shaw has already homered tonight. He launched one out of here in the fourth. This was the second of a back-to-back. -back. Aguilar homered to start the inning. And then Shaw went deep. Number 11 on the year for Travis. At the time, gave the Brewers a lead, three to two. And he'd love to do it again right here. First and second, outside and high for a ball. I know it's much easier said than done. Personal experience will tell you. Got to make sure or try and get that pitch down in the zone before you have two strikes down around the knees. You can get to it at 99, not up around the belt. That's the first breaking ball by Rosenthal, and he misses badly. And command is a problem here for Trevor Rosenthal. 15 pitches already. It's the third batter he's faced in this inning. Nobody out. Two on. Go ahead, run it second. Shaw takes a strike at 99. Boy, that didn't look like it was a strike. Borderline. 
Strike zone's been all over the place tonight. It's that old adage you've got to earn your strikes. Not in this case, so. No. There is the Cardinal closer. Down and in. Santana wisely holds his ground. That was a nice play back there by Fryer. Yeah, especially, you know, it's a breaking pitch, and Fryer able to get on top of it. Did a good job trying to square up on it. Did another change up. Well, Travis Shaw's got the count in his favor at 3 1. Two on, nobody out. Shaw in the left field. That is slicing foul. Three and two. That's the other side of the story with Rosenthal. He might walk the bases loaded, but he has the potential to strike out the side too. And again, he can get uh, get away with three and one a lot of times because of that big velocity, especially in on the hands, and that's what he did to Shaw there. Got in on his fists. Santana with great speed at second. He's ready to run. Carries the go-ahead run. Full count to Shaw. Hits one up the middle and a base hit. Santana's around third. He's going to try to score. The throw comes all the way in. It's wide. And Santana's in. Travis Shaw delivers in the clutch. 6-5 Milwaukee. And he did get one down in his own and able to line it into center. Tommy Pham tried to throw it all the way in. It was offline right away. And Ed Cedar aggressive with nobody out. Realizing what you were talking about, that he has the ability to strike out the side after loading the bases. Santana knew right away it was a base hit. Got a good jump. And the Brewers take the lead. Not a very good throw by Tommy Pham. And uh, he's lucky that Aguilar didn't sneak on into third base. Big hit for Travis Shaw, who just continues to deliver. Well, this guy is proving he is an everyday player in the big leagues. The Red Sox didn't think so. Brewers have given him the chance. He's their best run producer. And he's clutch. I mean, that's what he is. He's clutch. Now Perez with runners at first and second. Nobody out. Cardinals halfway expecting a bunt. And Perez takes a strike. Erdogan's another guy who can get to high velocity fastballs. He's got that short, compact swing. And this time he shows bunt. Takes ball one. Cardinals tied with a Carpenter homer in the seventh. Brewers jump right back on top after two walks and a single. 6 5 Milwaukee looking for more here as Perez takes a ball low. I just can't find the plate, can he? And Brewers making it work. Pitch count starting to climb 22 right now. And more balls and strikes. Oh. On the edge. Two and two now. Rosenthal had only given up two earned runs in his last nine games. A run is in with nobody out. Misses outside. Ball three. Another full count. Hundred. Ooh, that time. A hundred. And Matheny is close to having to make a move here. Full count. Perez up the middle and a base hit to center. Aguilar is going to hold at third. It's a two strike hit for Hernan Perez and the Brewers just keep it going in the eighth. Two walks now two singles nobody out. Well, it's the predictability of Rosenthal even when you're throwing ninety nine hundred these guys can get to it. And bases loaded one run lead and I think that's going to be it for Rosenthal. 
right down the middle and he bangs it back into center field and no chance Ed Cedar is going to send Aguilar. Right, what a beautiful piece of hitting there by Perez. Yeah, no kidding. I'm trying to pull it right back through the middle. And the beat goes on. So Rosenthal will leave with them loaded. The Brewers have taken the lead. It'll be a double switch for Mike Matheny. And we will set up the new hurler, which will be O entering the game with his translator. I don't think they want O actually. They want the other guy. <laughs> You're right. Oh, they do. Okay. All right. Yeah, Wait they do want O. Okay, bring him in. Are you sure? He starts, he stops. Now we can go to commercial. Player half of the double switch. Jed Jerko is in the game in left field. Jose Martinez is out. He made the last out. So put Sung Wong Oh in that spot. And Mike Matheny is bringing on his closer down a run with nobody out in the eighth inning. Eighth inning looking for probably two innings. I mean, you don't double switch unless you're figuring on using a guy for more than one inning. And this is uh, unusual to use your closer. He picked up a save his last time out, did O. That was back on the 11th against the Phillies. Bases loaded. Manny Pena's up there. Infield is in for the Cardinals. And Pena on the first pitch, a little flare foul. That'll end up in the seats. Big spot. Brewers trying to add to their lead. They have taken the lead here. On an RBI single by Travis Shaw, who is now at second base. That's Aguilar over at third, Perez at first. And Pena takes a ball. 92 93, but it plays a lot quicker than that with his delivery. He's got a good changeup. Pretty dependable for Mike Matheny. You know, he does give up a lot of hits. Especially for a closer, he gives up on average nine and a half hits per nine innings. The ball can be put in play on O as Pena fouls it back. And uh, Mike Matheny's got the infield in. Wants to cut down a run. Very dangerous with nobody out and the bases loaded, already down by a run. There they are, right on the grass. Pena still looking for his first grand slam. First at bat or first plate appearance with the bases loaded this season. One ball, two strikes to count. And Pena takes a ball inside. That's been called a strike tonight. That was close. Pena actually got rung up on a very similar pitch in the sixth inning. Right. When he jackknifed out of the way and it was called for a strike. Yeah, you don't want to leave it up to Doug Eddings tonight. You're at bat.
And Pena in the right field. Aguilar's going to tag. Piscotti can't make the play. I think he just let it drop. Yeah, I think you're right. I think he decided he's going to let it drop. Because the run would have scored probably. Sack fly. Looked like to me like he could have got there. Hmm. Peculiar. Yeah. Well, it gives Pena another swing. Oh, he's got the one he wants. Two and two the count on Pena. In the air center field, that's going to fall a base hit. Aguilar is in. And Ed Cedar will hold Shaw. Boy, the Brewers are just clicking along here in this eighth inning. The fifth consecutive base runner against the best two Cardinal relievers. It is now a 7-5 game as Pena delivers with an RBI. And all three hits have come with two strikes. And a little breaking ball off the outside corner just kind of dumps it into center our Badger mutual insurance run Manny Pena with a two out two out strike single to play to Aguilar. Well, they're putting together some pretty good at bats. Look at that pitch. I'll tell you what think about this rock the first two walks came on three two pitches. Shaw and Pena both deliver RBI hits with two strikes. Now Keon Broxton. Hey. And Perez hit was with two strikes. Yep. Broxton's had a good night. Solo homer in the third, had a triple and an RBI in the fourth. He has scored twice. Got a chance to bust this one open. Very unusual to bring your closer in in a situation like this. Especially in a double switch, because that, that usually means a manager wants multiple innings out of his closer. Well, there is activity still in that pen down there. And Right field. That's a ball. Two and one to Broxton. Cardinals have Tui Vilala loosening in the bullpen. Infield in, nobody out. Broxton takes a ball, and it's three and one now. O gives up a lot of hits and he walks a lot of batters. Not a great combination for a closer. Anybody out of the pen. The whip stat is at 1.4 for O. That's walks and hits per innings pitched. Now Broxton in the air, left field. Jericho is going to line it up. Shaw is going to tag. Here's the catch. Throw goes to third base. And the play is safe at third. Shaw scores the run. That would have been close. Of course, there would only would have only been the second out. If run would have scored anyway. And pretty close. Perez taking a big chance going to third base there. It'll be a sack fly and an RBI for Broxton. And I think Perez, Perez almost cut down. Yeah, I think Perez was thinking he's going home. Going to third and pretty close. I'm surprised he did make it. He did Ooh. miss him. Good call over there. Third base umpire Dan Bellino. Cardinals want to take a look. Now they say play on. So here's Arcia. Three runs are in for the Brewers. Now 8 5 Milwaukee. O stays on the mound. First and third, one out. Arcia swing and a miss. So now if you're Matheny, when do you pull the plug on your closer? I mean, you got to figure he's got one batter maybe to get out of this and mm -hmm. then. He gives up another run. You burn through your two best relievers in this eighth inning. Well, the Cardinals really only have Bowman left and Tui Valala because Lyons, the left-hander, threw three innings in game one. Yeah, you know he'll be shut down for a couple of days. Arcia. Who drove in a run in the fourth inning? That was that mad dash by Broxton to the plate on the ground ball to third. 0 for 3 tonight. Ball and a strike. One and two the count.
Brewers lost the opener 6 nothing were shut out. Been a rough go in this three game losing streak for the Brewers offensively but they have broken out tonight eight runs on ten hits. And they have gotten to the Cardinals relievers late which is what you love to see. And the winning scenario relievers Rosenthal oh. All three runs in this inning charged the Rosenthal. High pop up in the infield. And that'll be the second out. Frustrating at bat for Arcia. Trying to at least get the run in with a fly ball, but a pop up won't do it. And that's the second out. And now a matchup that all of Korea is anxious to see Eric Thames against Sung Wong Oh. Oh, for many years, pitched for the Samsung team in the KBO. And the last three years, Thames played for the NC Dinos. Now, O, oh, after his success in the KBO, ended up pitching in the Japanese major leagues. He would have not faced. All right. Eric Thames. He was already in Japan when Thames finally made it to Korea. Eric Thames is still big news, as is O, by the way, in Korea. There are daily reports on these two players. Big media coverage, watching every move. All of a sudden, a ton of Brewers gear has sprawled in South Korea right now. <laughs> Thames in the air to left field. And this should end the inning. Ranging over is Jerko, and that'll do it. But the Brewers do some damage. Three runs in. Clutch RBIs by Travis Shaw, who delivered the go ahead run of the game in this eighth inning. And then Pena strikes himself. Eight to five, Milwaukee, as we go to the bottom of the eighth.
Walker show. Yeah, I like it. How about a Walker Carpenter? <laughs> Where is that in Wisconsin? <laughs> I don't know, but we should uh, find one. Jacob Barnes is in. The Brewers now lead by three, and they roll out their best two relievers, if need be. Barnes being the setup man to Corey Knable. And these two have been excellent. Colton Wong leads off. Brewers are still going to have to deal with Carpenter at some point as Wong lines one to center field, a base hit. Well, well this turned his game around, hadn't he? A couple of strikeouts, now a couple of singles. And Barnes with a man on to start it. Yep, fastball pulls the hands in, able to barrel it up into center field. Good quick bat. That'll bring up Aledmus Diaz now. And on the first pitch, he fouls it away. Tell the Cardinals certainly have a game plan against Jacob Barnes. That is to be aggressive. He is a strike thrower. He's got a nasty slider. Yeah, and be aggressive really in the count on the fastball. Ben's kind of thin for Mike Bethini. Just Yadier Molina left. Yeah, remember he brought Jerko in on a double switch. That one's in the air. Routine fly ball for Broxton. And the first out. Jacob Barnes, speaking of late bloomers, he is one extremely wild coming up through the Brewers minor league system. He always had the electric fastball and that great slider. But he was able to corral that thing at the double A level and then he was a quick study once he got it figured out and got everything lined up and organized. He was a football player. Could have played college football. Takes that football mentality to the mound and well, once he found it it was a quick rise to a very prominent role and you could easily see Barnes as a big league closer in the future. There's that cut fastball right there 92 under the bat of Garcia. Well, the only real trouble that he had there was a stretch where he just couldn't find that cutter for strikes couldn't get swings and hitters were all over the fastball but that didn't last long. Last year Barnes made his big league debut at the age of 26. He had started the year in double A went from double A to triple A last year was virtually unhittable down there. That's in the dirt gets away from Pena. And Wong over to second base puts a runner into scoring position with one out. Now the cut fastball in front of home plate. Pena not able to get down and block it. And backhanded it. He realizes not the way to handle that pitch. You can hold that cutter. You better be ready to block it, especially with two strikes. One ball, two strikes on Garcia. He's been on all three times tonight. Had the key at bat in the sixth inning as the Cardinals were trying to mount the comeback. Jimmy Nelson got him 0-2. Garcia kept fouling off pitches, had four straight foul balls. And then Nelson hit him with a slider. Cardinals would go on to score twice in that inning. They tied it in the seventh. Brewers. Just took the lead with three in the eighth. Two and two the count on Garcia. On the ground. Over is Perez and there is out number two. Long to third base. So Barnes with two outs he'll face the catcher Fryer who has bounced into two key double plays. 
both six four three on the first pitch a fly ball slicing foul into the seats. Got a crowd of over 40,000 tonight. They put 81,000 in the house for this doubleheader today. Hey, not bad, huh? Well attended. A lot of folks have made their way home. School night on a Tuesday night. <laughs> yeah, school night. Swing and a miss, put a fastball right by him. 97 to pitch that he was able to retire Garcia. Had a fastball in, that went up. No balls, two strikes on Fryer. Barnes trying to put up a zero in the eighth. As close as we've ever gotten to a foul ball here in the booth, Rock. We're set back a ways. Is over there by uh, Levering and Grindle. Well, we've never gotten a foul ball. This guy right case. here has caught two baseballs. Barehanded. Look at that. He That's says, nice. Dos. Give him a glove. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Aaron, I'm really impressed by that. Did you see the catch? That was, hand? that was an impressive catch. Sweet. Very nice. A swing and a miss, and Barnes strikes out Fryer. The inning is over. A scoreless eighth. Lewis Brinson will lead off. We go to the ninth. Brewers up eight to five in St. Louis. Offensively, goodness. Yeah. Wow, 28 hits. Escobar with five hits. Rosario's got four hits. Castro with four hits. Now that is a good night for the hitting coach. He'll be sleeping well tonight. Yeah, right. I mean, Minnesota Twins have to be the biggest surprise in baseball, right? Sano's not even in the lineup here right. tonight. Uh, Twins lost 100 games last year mm -hmm. in first place. Here's Lewis Brinson. He'll start it. Tui Valala is on the mound for the Cardinals. Brewers don't play the Twins till August. A late. Yeah, it's normally uh, a June series, typically. Last year, first road trip. See the numbers on Sam Tui Valala. 11th appearance. 8 5 Brewers as Brinson Hi. takes a strike. 1 and 1 the count. 
20 to seven. Man, yeah. what a night. Big runs. And it's not like, you know, one guy dominated the game. They, there was a ton of players who had big nights in that one, mostly from the bottom of the order, actually. You know what's interesting about the Twins, though? I mean, they are now 13 and 19 at home, 20 and 9 on the road. Go figure. Yeah. Well, a team that can win on the road is usually a team that has some staying power. I don't think many outside of their markets believe the Brewers or the Twins have the staying power, but they're both hanging in there. Twins with that win are now 33 and 28. Takes them five over. 2 2 to Brenton. Big bouncing ball to second. And Wong will make the play for the out. One away in the ninth. Miller Light, what's on tap? Matt Garza comes back from the disabled list tomorrow. He'll match up against Mike Leak, who has been excellent this year. He and Lance Lynn have been the Cardinals' best. So we'll see how effective Garza can be coming back from the disabled list. He's been pretty good this year. We'll see how the layoff is going to affect him. A chest contusion. Remember, Garza had that collision with Jesus Aguilar on the last homestand. And 10 days on the DL, he's eligible to come off tomorrow. And that's a spot where that new 10 day DL pays off big for the Brewers. Probably wouldn't have put him on a disabled list without that. It was the 15 day. Then you have to pitch shorthanded, right? Put you in a bind. I like the 10 day DL. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then the Brewers would be forced to have only eight guys in their bullpen. <laughs> you can't get by with eight in the bullpen. <laughs> I mean, every team's going at least eight these days. One out for Santana. Santana got it all started last inning. Drew a leadoff walk off Hi. Trevor Rosenthal, who was hit for three earned runs in that eighth inning. Did not record an out. Hit sharply in the left field, a base hit for Santana. Yeah, turned around 97 in on his hands. Boy, he can uh, buggy whip that fastball. Right there in on his fists and uh, you know, barrels it up and into left field. 97 miles an hour. It's a pretty swing. It is nice and level. He's got that island chill. Domingo Santana. He's from the Dominican Republic, but spent a lot of time growing up, usually half the year in the Virgin Islands. Yeah, laid back personality and you don't get much out of him except for a swing and. <laughs> Yes or no. Here's Aguilar. Cardinals jumped out early in this game. They led 2 nothing, scoring runs in the first and the second off Jimmy Nelson. But then the Brewers scored five unanswered to take a 5-2 lead. Cardinals then scored the next three. Carpenter tied it with a homer in the seventh. And then the Brewers with that three-run eighth. Been a good day offensively for Milwaukee. Eight runs on 11 hits. And an impressive eighth inning against one of the Cardinals' best pitchers in Rosenthal. He and O. And my guess is with the double switch with O, if he was able to get out of the inning with a low pitch count, he might have gone out again for the ninth, but that wasn't the case. It was made him work. And then nothing from the Cardinal offense in the bottom of the eighth. So Tui Valala is the call for Matheny. Swing and a miss by Aguilar. Two and one. Cubs beat the Mets tonight 14 to three. Thinking that was going to be the high scoring game of the night they were six runs shy of the twins tonight that 20 to 7 win over Seattle
Clayton Kershaw got a win tonight. Dodgers beat the Indians 7 5. Kershaw now 9 and 2, 2 2 3 ERA. Good matchup there. Like Fryer may have got crossed up. Wants to get the sign straight. When well, a guy's throwing 97, that's yeah. a sick feeling, huh? All right. I mean, he threw the glove out there, almost knocked his glove off again. That happened earlier in the night. Glove went, came right off after you know baseball got in there. I've certainly seen pitchers forget signs. Or not see the right sign. And I've heard rumors of catchers who have forgotten what fingers they put down. Yeah, who might that have been? I don't know. I've just I've heard it somewhere. I, as Aguilar draws the walk. It's like the uh, center in football forgetting the snap count. <laughs> He's never off sides. <laughs> he never jumps on yep, the ball. I've stone. done it. I've done it before. <laughs> Crossed myself up. <laughs> Blame the pitcher went out there. I could like a. <laughs> You know, he crossed me up and then shortstop would come in. Swammer said, No, that was you, Rock. <laughs> Thanks, pal. Thanks a lot for backing me up. <laughs> what Swain didn't tell you is that he was just trying to instill a little confidence in his pitcher. Yeah, right there you go. Yeah, he had a manager, you know, mentality back then, even. Uh huh. Travis Shaw delivered a big hit in the eighth. Twice tonight he has given the Brewers the lead. Home run in the fourth to make it 3 2. RBI single off Rosenthal in the eighth to make it 6 5. Ball and a strike. First and second with one man out here in this ninth inning. Long day of baseball today. This doubleheader began at 1.15. Players were here at the ballpark as early as 9.30 a.m. Yeah. Making up for that off day back in uh, back early in the year. Yeah. That was a May 3rd rain out here in St. Louis. Yeah, they one. called the game and it stopped raining and never started again. You were here. Twice the Brewers have had a rainless delay, rainless postponement. They did that in Chicago as well. Shaw fights one off. By the way, that makeup game for that Chicago rainout is just prior to the trip to New York to play the Yankees. That's going to be July 6th. A one timer down at Wrigley Field. Brewers will wrap up a series with the Orioles on July 5th and then go to Chicago for a day game, makeup game, and then go to New York for a three game series with the Yankees before the All Star break. Shaw strikes out first out of the inning second out of the inning I beg your pardon here comes in on Perez two hits tonight two for four for Hernan and he and Arcia have been outstanding up the middle with double plays Three of them turn tonight. Hi.
Perez a shot to third right at Garcia. Side retired. The Brewers come up empty in the ninth. We head to the home half. Last call for the Cardinals. 8-5 Brew Crew. Baseball tonight on Fox Sports Wisconsin presented by Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. Ninth inning last call for St. Louis and Corey Knable is on to try to nail it down. The Brewer closer Knable entering today's game with eight saves he's blown three and a sparkling 1 1 5 earned run average. Yeah picked up a save on Friday against the Diamondbacks it was an inning and a third he struck out three. Had a pickup save number eight. Got a three run cushion in the ninth inning. Jed Jerko will lead off. He came in on a double switch. He played left field on the double switch, which is, by the way, the first time in his career he's played in the outfield. Had a couple of plays out there. Handled them well. Mm -hmm. So it'll be Jerko and then to the top of the order, Carpenter. And then Tommy Fan. And a three run lead. First ball swinging. High pop up. Aguilar sizing it up. Foul grounds. He's got it. One pitch and one out for Knable. I think it's the same approach. I mean, these Cardinals, the approach of, against Barnes, probably the same against Knable. Don't want to have to deal with that big hook that he's throwing. Did Jerko down by three. Chase, uh, chasing that first pitch. Here comes Matt Carpenter. And if you're the Brewers, a perfect spot for him to bat with a three run lead and nobody on. Three hits tonight. Carpenter's a triple away from the cycle. Doubled and scored in the first. He drove in a run with a single in the second, and then a game tying homer in the seventh. Strike one. Well, the Brewers have a lot of heat in the back end of that bullpen with Barnes and Knable. Yes, they do. Riding in the upper 90s. And both of them have exceptional breaking pitches. Knable's is a curve. There's a high fastball, 98. Carpenter right through it. 0 oh, 2 the count. Carpenter hit his 12th home run. His batting average is low, but the power numbers are up there. It's on the rise, though. Yeah, it sure is. He's had a good run since being put back in the leadoff spot. And he hits that one hard into right field. That's way back there. Santana will run it down just shy of the track. 
got in on his hands on that 0 2 pitch. Peeney wanted that pitch up around the letters. He didn't get it there, did Knabel? And Carpenter just missed it. It sounded like it had the flight of a routine fly ball and just kept carrying to the track. No. But two outs. Tommy Pham now. Corey Knabel has a strikeout streak on the line right now. 32 straight games with at least one K. That is a Brewers franchise record. I think he'd be happy with any kind of out here. Oh, get greedy, Rock. He's close to the record. Aroldis Chapman had 37 consecutive games with a strikeout. Get greedy. Got to get greedy. Thirty two straight games with a K. The Brewers record was 20. Well, I hadn't thrown a curveball yet. Two and one to Tommy Pham. Yeah, he wants to start over. Slow roller. Shaw coming in, barehands it, and throws leap. And a base runner on an infield hit. Cardinals are still alive here in the ninth inning. They had Travis Shaw playing way behind the bag, and Tommy Pham got eaten up on the inside part of the plate with the big fastball, and, and no chance for Travis to get the out of turn. Good pitch, but Pham able to reach. Second time fans reached. And he's on for Piscotti. Brewers trying to earn a split in this day night doubleheader today. Fam takes off. Knable deals the curveball high. And certainly don't want to see that tying run come to the plate. Pitcher spot is due next. Matheny already has Yadier Molina on deck. There you go. Strike is in there. Molina is his last position player. All right, back to back curveballs. Might be another one. One ball, one strike. There's a breaking ball and a swing and a foul, and it's one and two. And now he's set up to maybe keep the streak alive. Yep, high fastball, maybe another curve in the dirt. He'd love to end it on a K. He'll take an out. One two pitch. Went with a high fastball. Ninety eight miles an hour. Two and two now. Canable not save number eight. On Friday that was his last outing as Rock mentioned he. Has had a good stretch of off days. Which he needed. Two and two. And he got him a called strike three. The streak is alive for Knable. A 99 mile an hour fastball. He notches the ninth save of the year. And the Brewers win at eight to five. Boy, what a ball game. What a comeback after giving up the lead. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, this Brewers offense very pesky in that eighth inning. A couple of walks, three hits against the Cardinals' best out of the bullpen. Nice victory here to split the doubleheader. Corey Knable with 30.